since we've done this i feel like i haven't live streamed on my own channel um for a a decade (laughs) it's it's probably been less than that but um but i'll but we'll pretend it's a decade i uh welcome everybody it's good to see all these uh familiar faces and new faces here uh in the live stream um uh, some of you, it's it's morning. Some of you, it's afternoon. Some of you, it's evening. I try to time these things in a way that hopefully isn't too early or too late for the vast majority, but I, I don't always get it right. Um, it's great to be back. I was off at Social Media Marketing World last week, uh, the week before, actually, where I got to get my learn on and, and, and um, learn about a lot of the new things going on with Web 3.0 and the metaverse and how that's going to affect content creators in the future and how to approach different markets and different platforms. And it's heavy, heavy stuff. But one of the things that um, I always come back to here is as I keep trying to learn new and new things, I, I see a lot of channels still struggling with some of the basics of YouTube is just, man, like how to get some traction, how to get some momentum, how to get your videos to start driving a few more views, how to get your channel to drive a few more subscribers, um, really how to dial it in and start getting moving towards the thing that you're trying to do. Um, and, and that's why I wanted to uh, talk about here today. It was some, some interesting comments out here. Uh, some, some familiar faces. Good to see you all. Uh, Architectural Sheet Metal, good to see you, my friend. Um, my friend Kalel, good to see you. Morning, sir. Uh, <laughs> there's, um, there's some comments about, like, I saw one in the chat that was like, oh, Daniel does Filmora content? I didn't know that. I, I know him from his other streams. And it's true. It's one of the things, what, when I first started this channel, I leaned very heavily on on the basics of video editing and using the software that I was using at that time, which is Filmora. I still use um, quite a bit. Um, and I leaned a lot on that, growing the channel, trying to teach people what I was learning as I was uh, learning how to edit content. Um, but the focus of the channel has always been not just learning a specific software. It's really learning how to make better video content, upload it to YouTube, and then learn how to connect with the target audience and grow a channel. And I think those two things really um, intermesh more than people realize. And I think sometimes um, the, the advice you hear and that gets tossed around about you know, how to grow a YouTube channel can be confusing because you hear things like, well, make better thumbnails or you know, keep the audience watching. And <laughs> sometimes it's deeper than that. It's deeper than that. You know? um, like if a new movie comes out, you don't care about how cool the movie poster is, right? I mean, that's a good thing. If you see the movie poster, you'd be like, oh man, you know, there's the new whatever film that you might be interested in, right? Batman or Marvel or uh, if it's a new Disney, you know, um, pick, pick anything that they own now. <laughs> uh, if there's a great movie poster, it's cool. I think it helps sell that thing that you might be interested in. But I think any one of us who's, who's really interested in um, watching a great movie probably digs a little deeper, probably starts checking out reviews, see what other people have to say about it, rely on things like, is this a sequel? Do I know something about this movie from watching previous movies. Um, and YouTube isn't all that different. It's really not all that different. The, the same things hold true to our channels. Like the, the idea of growing a YouTube channel really comes down to what the audience thinks about our channel and how effective we are at reaching that target audience we're trying to reach. And what do they think about us from things we've done in the past, other content? What do they think about us when they do see our, our movie posters, our thumbnails, right? Does that, does that grab their attention immediately? Um, the name of the, of the new movie we put out, the new video. Um, there's all these little components that work together, but there's, there's a much bigger picture about how all of these things make sense um, to effectively target an audience and make sure that when you put out videos today, that YouTube is going to serve those videos to the right target audience, that target audience is going to be interested in watching them, and then hopefully earmark, bookmark, subscribe to your channel to come back and watch more of it later. The real goal is engagement, right? Get them to watch, get them to watch another video, get them to comment. Subscribing is is a piece of engagement. Liking is a piece of engagement. Sharing your video out is a piece of engagement. All of these things are are super important to um, uh, effectively growing a channel in this day and age. But uh, today, this is what we're going to do, just so you understand. I'm going to be taking questions from you guys right in the chat. 
Um, we'll try to keep this. Um, we'll try to keep this smooth. You don't have to ask questions a thousand times. I have my lovely channel manager Megan here, who is going to be watching for comments that um, are calling out uh, things that I think make sense. Um, a lot of your channels. Uh, really need help in specific areas. And I'm going to be pulling some of these channels up. As you guys know, I do a recurring show on the StreamYard channel with Dean Emin, my pal Dean Emin, um, where we do live channel reviews. But it's very it's all about best practices, that game show, where we really nail best practices, uh, which is great for an overall view of things you can think about to optimize your channel in general. Um, but what we don't do on that channel is sort of deeper dives into into specific channels, pull up specific channels, and just start saying things like, um, you know, here's some here's some deeper areas where I think you could improve. Um, we we let the wheel decide there. But there's no wheel here today. I'm going to actually be answering questions. If you have specific questions about your channel, I'll pull them up and we'll see if we can solve some of these things. Um, I've helped thousands of channels on the platform uh, reach their goals. I've helped hundreds of content creators. Um, go from part-time creators to full-time creators. I've had uh, many creators show up on the front page of Google in the trending tab as creators on the rise. Um, I've helped a lot of creators get sponsorship deals and effectively drive the kind of revenue they want to drive. So there's a lot of pieces to the puzzle <laughs> that, we, um, that we work on every single day. But today you ask me your questions. If there's something that you want to know about your channel, if, it's, if you think that something isn't working effectively, um, ask me those questions and try to be more specific. Don't just give me how come my channel's not growing. Don't just give me how can I get more subscribers. Don't just give me how can I get more views. You know, if you can give me a deeper question, if there's something you're actually struggling with that you think you might be doing right but seems to be not connecting, um, those are the questions I'm going to lean towards first. The ones that people have been introspective about their channels and thought about things that they think you know they think that is a, already a hurdle. They've They've looked at their channels enough to know where their own hurdles are. So, um, so let me let me look into the chat here. Um, let's see, ETV L Taller de los Videos. Let's look at wow, how's that for a Spanish accent right there? Like reading the language like I was born. El Taller de los Videos. My best video had a hundred thousand um, plus. I'm guessing that was views. Um, and after that, it's hard to even do 100, and I have 340 plus videos. No sense. It probably does make more sense. Let me see if I can find your channel. Let's, uh, this might be hard for me because I'm guessing this is, uh, um, this is in Spanish. So there might be some pieces here that are harder for me to, um, to distinguish. Let me type your long name in here and see if I can find it. Okay. Uh, let me share this up over here. Uh, let's go here. And let me pull your comment out here. So the question is, is you had one video that didn't went well. The, one of the problems is going to be for me is I don't speak Spanish. So one of the things I would tell you is like when I go into your um, channel and I start looking, you do. You have one video from a year ago. Oh, I know what you did. Let's, uh, hold on a second. I, can, I, I don't speak Spanish but I do speak Filmora. <laughs> so your highest performing video was actually a video that was talking about probably maybe green screen or how to use Filmora, because I'm seeing Filmora 2022 um, from a year ago, which is funny. You put out a, a video a year ago about Filmora 2022 back in 2021, which may have been smart. Um, it looks like that you're, you're doing some video editing. Um, here you got Filmora 9. Um, here you've got Filmora 9. So, you know, you're not too different than, than um, the, the channel that I have, right? Because we both uh, make content that talks about um, video editing and how to help people do that. Here's the deal. So you did some Filmora. You did this one. I don't know. This looks like it's a smoke effect. This is a Filmora 9 one. Um, it looks like if you're teaching people mostly Filmora, Filmora 9... It's not that your stuff isn't driving views. This is one of the things I can talk to you about because I've done a lot of Filmora content. I stopped making uh, as much Filmora content. One, because I feel like I had it's been covered. There does come a point where you have to understand that you need to figure out the needs of your audience and what they're interested in. The reason my Filmora content connected really well, and I have Filmora videos that drove over 2 million views a video, was I found angles that other people weren't doing. I found angles like my highest performing video was how to edit like Zach King in Filmora. 
and that has over 2 million views because no one specifically came out and showed people how to do more with a simple software, and that was part of my success. And what it looks like here is you're leveraging, um, and again, you'll have to read through my fact that I'm reading Spanish titles and I don't speak Spanish, but a lot of this seems to be really simple, overdone. I don't want to be overdone. I don't want, don't take that as an insult. Stuff that's been covered a lot about Filmora, basic Filmora tricks, how to do, and this one's not even Filmora, how to do an intro like Star Wars, how to use smoke effects, how to, um, whatever, this is a clapper, maybe a, you know, I, I don't know what each one of these are, a neon effect, I can't tell you how many times I've seen that covered. So what I would tell you, my friend, is like anything else, if you're going to enter into a um, conversation. Every one of you out there that has a has a channel is entering into a conversation. The very first thing is you want to understand what that conversation is, what your channel's about, who the target audience is, and why they would watch your content. So if you're making content and you're you're teaching people how to edit videos, specifically using Filmora more than other products, um, then you need to make sure that you're covering things that are new, unique, different, or giving people information that they haven't already been given a hundred times. If I started talking about today, um, if I had a channel that talked about Filmora and I just said how to download Filmora, that would probably wouldn't do very well because people kind of know how to do that. And they've been, there's been a million videos made on it. So try to find something different. When I was making Filmora videos, I was doing things like, can you uh, turn yourself into annoying orange using Filmora? Let's try that. So it was always about being different and standing out and creating a structure that worked differently. So number one advice is make sure you understand the needs of your target audience. Do they need another video teaching them a trick in Filmora that a hundred other channels, a thousand other channels, a million other channels, including the Filmora channel has already done? I used to pride myself on making content that the Filmora channel themselves hadn't done. So think about that. Uh, let's see, uh, just trying to go through some of these motivation theory running. Hey, John, how you doing, pal? You and D have helped my channel so much over the years. No question. I appreciate that, John. You're one of the guys that, you know, you've been in the trenches trying to grow a channel and raise a family and have a job and do all that. So, you know, you know how deep it gets. Um, it's commitment. It's a, it's a, for, for when, if anyone says YouTube is a marathon, John will tell you, screw that. YouTube is an ultra marathon because <laughs> he runs ultra marathons and it really is, um, it really takes a lot of time and effort. Let me um, let me scroll down here and just take a look at what's being asked. Um, hey, Daniel, I took a break from YouTube, and now I want to get back, uh, start getting back to into it. So what are your tips for getting back into a YouTube from a long break? It's a great question. Um, K. DeLegion, K. DeLegion, I'm going to say that wrong. Um, but here's here's what I would say. Um, coming back from a long break is long breaks don't necessarily hurt your channel. Um uh, my friend Brian G. Johnson took a long break. I've been taking a long break. I've been working on so much other content that putting content on my own channel, I've been taking a very long break um, because other things have come up, other sponsors I'm working with, other things that I'm trying to do now as opposed to just growing the YouTube channel. So what I would tell you is this. Uh, come, back to the, come back to the basics. Remember that uh, if you haven't published in a while, that doesn't mean that your channel can't continue to grow. It doesn't mean that all of those subscribers aren't, aren't interested in what you put up now. But remember that uh, a channel never grows faster than when the content connects with people who have no idea who you are. So the idea of um, recommendation on the platform, super important. Don't just think in terms of search, think in terms of recommendation. Meaning when you publish a video, it's gonna get put on the homepage of YouTube. Let me give you an example. If I opened up my homepage of YouTube, uh, let me switch over to a homepage here. Let me share it. Uh, let's see. And I will share the screen. So here, here's my, you, my homepage. These are all different things that YouTube thinks it knows about me as a viewer. Do I love hot ones? I sure do. <laughs> do, do I love content about Mr. Beast and Mr. Beast contents? A content? Content? Wow. It's been a while. I got to get back into practice. The tongue isn't working. I, I do. So it's going to serve me things like that. Um, these are some of my students. So I'm going to see some of their content, like my friend Esther, who's live right now. Um, I'm very interested in rock and roll music. Um, rest in peace, the great Taylor Hawkins. Can't believe we lost him at 50 years old. 
I'm interested in like Marvel movies. These are some of my friends, Cody Warner. I work with StreamYard. So this is YouTube trying to understand me as a viewer and serve me things based on my interaction with YouTube. So what you want to think about, my friend, is who are you trying to connect with? Um, remember that your new content is going to get served up against their other interests. So make sure that when you publish your new content, that it's really focused and it really targets the audience you're trying to reach. Okay. Understanding your value proposition, the three W's, the first W is what, what's your channel about niche? Are you a cooking channel? Are you a, a gaming channel? Are you a travel channel? Um, you know, t are you a, a music channel? Um, the number two W is who is who, who is the target audience? And some people get confused when I say this, when I say who is the target audience, I don't mean, um, how old they are or where they live or are they male or female. I mean, what are their interests? Like with me, the channel I make, I try to target people who are trying to make videos and put them onto YouTube and then grow a YouTube channel. You could be, it doesn't matter how old you are. It doesn't matter if you're a male or, or a female. It doesn't matter where you live. If that's an interest of yours, then, then you're my target audience. You're someone I'm trying to reach. So when I say to you, who's your target audience, everyone in the chat right now, who's your target audience, you should be able to tell me who your target audience is based on interest, the shared interest that you have. And then the last W is always why. Why would they choose to watch your video as opposed to anything else they might get served in recommendation, right? Like if I'm really into cool old vintage muscle cars, I would be very quick to click on this video right here over this one from TubeBuddy that I actually made myself because I know that's me. <laughs> of course, I'm not going to click that one, uh, which is a great video, by the way. Um, but these other ones, I'm looking around like, what am I more interested in? The M1 Max? Sure, I got. I need to pick up a new. Um, I need to pick up a new laptop for when I'm traveling. But I'm more interested in that right now than I am in the coolest, fastest truck they've ever filmed. This vintage truck. This one might get me to click first. One based on the thumbnail, but two based on my interest. Am I more interested in talking shop about computers right now? Or let's talk about cool cars. Right now, it's coming out of the winter. I had to go start my 66 Mustang and 67 Fairlane the other day. And all I wanted to do was take them out on the road, but I couldn't. So those, those would capture my interest. So that's what you need to do when you're... Um, when you're out there and making new content for a channel that you haven't made in a while, focus on how to capture your audience's interest in, in a split second, all right? Brian G. Johnson always called YouTube um, ADHD TV, which always made me laugh. It's literally people are scrolling and they're scrolling. And if they watch a video, they watch the first few seconds and go, and eh, now nah, that's not for me. And they move on to the next. So really think about what's going to stop your viewers, your viewers in, the tra in their tracks while they're in the scroll. And then once they click... Now you have to hold them, okay? I say this all the time. It's like a real estate agent. If you're trying to sell a house and you've got great curb appeal, like the lawn looks perfect, the house is freshly painted, man, now the bushes and the shrubbery, is all, it's perfect. Then you walk in the front door, the ceiling has holes in it, the walls are all punched in, the floors look like crap. They turn around and go, this one's not for me. So it's not just about titles and thumbnails and curb appeal. You got to get them into the house. And then once they're in, you've got to keep them there. And that's content structure. That's how you build your content uh, to make sure that you're really paying attention to serving that viewer's needs and hold on to them. Doesn't matter how long you've, you've been um, taking a break for. If you can come back strong and start making content, that new content might take a minute to connect because a lot of those subscribers aren't used to seeing your content being served to them again. But you can build that moment, uh, momentum right back up as long as you're serving the needs of your target audience, okay? Um, let me see. I'd love to see what you think about my thumbnails. Do you have time to check it out? That's a pretty um, specific request. Sure, I'll look at that. Now, one thing I want to tell you, um, ep Epilepsy Explained, uh, and I'll tell everybody, uh, sometimes people um, get wrapped up in um, the idea of, tell me if my thumbnails are good. You know who decides if your thumbnails are good? Your target audience. Your target audience. They will either click or not click. So I can sit here all day and give you pointers, which I will. Um, but one of the things I'm always going to tell anybody is, um, is that if your thumbnails are good, you don't have to ask somebody because you'll see that the click through rate is decent. All right. The average on the platform is two to 10%. When you first publish a video, it's going to be served out to, um, your most active viewers and subscribers. So you should have a higher CTR in the opening hours of your 
publishing um, than you will later on. It usually tends to trend down as it gets served out to a larger target audience who may not be, may not know you, may not be as great a fit. So what you want to do is always look at your own data and say, well, um, you know, is, are my, are, is my audience clicking and are they watching? So let me do this. Let me share your channel here. I think I have it. Epilepsy, Epilepsy Explained. Um, you've only got 15 videos up. So first and foremost, um, I, I would tell you, try to get 30 to 50 and up towards 100 videos published before you really start questioning data. Um, it, it took me a good 50 videos that were really starting to connect. It had driven thousands of views before I could really get data that was usable. You've got a few good ones in here. I can see you've got a video um, down over here that's got 3,000 views. You've got one that's got 1,200 views. That's got 1,800 views. And you've only got 15 v uh, videos up. I think they're powerful. You know what I like about some of these is they're simple. Um, some of these are simple. Where I would watch out for is using too much text in a video. Um, seizures, but this isn't too bad, but some of these ones, when you start putting a ton of text, um, just be careful about that. Uh, sometimes, and especially if you're using text that's hard to read, um, I'm trying to read that one. Uh, I don't know what that word is. Krenz, it's, uh, Kreuzfeldt. Oh, it's German. Uh, Kreuzfeldt. So uh, you used a font that makes it harder to read here. Try to go with something that's simple to read. When you do put font in your text and font in your text. Excuse me. Hold on a second. In a moment. Ah, that's better. When you do put text in your thumbnails, make sure you're using font that's easy to read. Don't make it more difficult for the viewer to see it, especially considering that most of these are going to be seen on mobile. Um, and I also believe that text isn't a bad thing, but don't always lean on text. In your situation, um, when I like what you're doing here. When you're talking about specific pills, you're leaning on the image of pills. That's really strong. It makes sense. And then putting the name of the pill. Side effects and uses. I think that's a strong one right there. It was a month ago. It drove 1,000 views. Uh, topper, topper a mate. Top, or top of max. I'm going to say that wrong. I apologize. Uh, uses plus side effects plus more. Um, consider, I would consider simplifying some of your titles. I like this. Topper a mate. Top of max. I would have put uses and side effects, period. All those plus signs uh, and more, more doesn't tell me anything. Uses and side effects is probably enough and let bring people in. Or even think about being more compelling. Um, Topamex, should you be using it? Is it, the right, is it the right medication for you? Don't be afraid to be compelling in your titles. But I like a lot of the thumbnails. I think they work. In the chat, what do you guys think about these thumbnails? He's only got 15 videos. Give me like a thumbs up or a thumbs down in the chat, if you think that these thumbnails are kind of clickable, kind of effective, seem to be talking about the kinds of things. A lot of times I like to get other people's views on what you think. So if you like these thumbnails and they seem to be clear, give me a thumbs up. If you think they're a little tricky to understand, give me a thumbs down. We'll let some people in the chat give you some ideas of what they think, my friend. Um, we've got a, we've got um, electronic medium gives you a thumb up, thumbs up. Uh, hidden history with races, yeah, pretty good. Thumbs up and an okay. I think that, I think that, um, yeah, those thumbnails look good. I kind of agree. Shards of gaming. I think they're pretty strong. Here's what I would tell you is, um, my friend, epilepsy explained. Keep building. Keep building. You're already showing great signs of growth. Strong thumbnails. Um, views on. Assuming these views are organic. I'm assuming these are organic. When I see three thousand views. Uh, assuming you're not paying for ads or paying for placement. If these are organic, I think you're doing a lot of the right things. Keep on it and focus on making sure that you do a little research to understand what people really want to know about ep epilepsy and targeting those conversations. Uh, Architectural Sheet Metal, thank you for the $10 super chat. I wanted to thank you for our recent channel consult as it directed my focus to coming up with videos, ideas to specifically target a wider audience rather than limiting to only sheet metal installers. Yeah, that was a big thing. Do you mind if I talk about you real quickly? Architectural Sheet Metal is a guy who owns a company who does um, sheet metal installations, specifically metal roofs, you know, roofing systems. A lot of people, you, you know, um, you may have seen these, they put them on uh, these sort of metal roofs that are a lot more weatherproof than, uh, the typical asphalt shingles that can break up and flake over time. Um, so we had had a conversation, we did a channel consultation. And one of the things I said to him is who's your target audience. And he said, well, you know, people who want to install, you know, metal roofs. And I said, that's not your target audience. That's, you know, that's what you do for a living. That your target audience is people who are interested in learning about metal roofs. 
Do you have to be an installer to want to learn about metal roofs? Are metal roofs better than than regular shingled roofs? How long do metal roofs last? How long? How much does it does a metal roof cost? These are the kinds of conversations you should be having instead of teaching people how to install them. Because if I'm a homeowner who may be very interested in a metal roof on my house, my roof needs replacement, and maybe a metal roof is the right choice, I want to turn to someone like my pal Architectural Sheet Metal 101 and go, you know, hey, what can you tell me about, you know, this, these kinds of roofs? And if you start telling me the right tools to use to install them, I'm going to be like, that. that's not what I was looking for. Like, I... I'm looking for you to help me, you know, is this the right choice for my house? So I pushed him more in that direction. He's starting to work in that direction, and I think it's a better choice. And that's the exact same thing I was just talking to all of you about. Think about your target audience. Who's your real target audience? There's your interests and then the interests of the people you're trying to reach. And where do those overlap? And if you can nail that, that's when you can really start finding some success. Uh, Let's see. The great Doug Hewson handing out advice in the chat as always. Um, oh, you're talking about the magnifying glass, Doug? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there's a couple extensions that I use. Um, let me see if I can kill my branding. One second here. Oh, yeah. I use, uh, there's a magnifying, if you look up here, it's a browser extension. I have a magnifying glass that you can change to different sizes. I also have the, the SketchUp one here that allows me to draw all over things in different colors. And uh, that's a great one for pointing to things. Uh, this is just browser extensions. Really good to use for... Uh, for when we're doing live stuff, it's easier to help you guys see, especially if you're watching on a mobile device. And plus, I'm really old, so my eyes don't work really great without my reading glasses on. So that makes it more helpful for me. All right, let me get back into the chat here, uh, find some questions. Megan, uh, throw me some questions here. Um, okay. Uh, some of these Megan's throwing to me, I'm going to have to read them to you. Um, uh, the side of radio question said, so I just hit 50,000 views on a channel, but want but I want but I keep noticing that the watch hours are going backwards. Is just this a lack of consistent uploading? Um, the watch hours are going backwards. What I assume you mean is you're looking at your um, watch hours um, in terms of monetization, right? <clears throat> Excuse me. In the monetization, um, if you're trying to get monetized, YouTube is going to look at your channel watch hours over the last uh, 365 days. And so every day you move forward, it moves the clock forward. It looks back a uh, full year. So if you're trying to get monetized, it's going to look at how many subscribers you have on your channel currently, which doesn't fluctuate so much. But what might fluctuate is if you, let's say you put out a video a year ago that drove a lot of views, but isn't driving a lot of views now. So you'll have this spike in views and watch time. Um, and as that video gets older, let's say it gets to be over a year, that surge that it got in, spi- in watch time is no longer part of the last 365 days that YouTube is looking at when you're going to get your channel monetized. Don't worry about that stuff. Just try to keep putting out um, content and moving forward. The growth of a channel is always going to go up and down like the stock market. The goal here is to try to figure out what goals you have for the channel and work towards achieving those goals. Watch time will raise, watch time will lower, you'll have certain videos that connect and ones that don't connect as much. Keep trying to dial your content in and super serve the target audience that you're trying to reach with content that hopefully your channel itself shows you connect. When you have a video that does really well, analyze why it did well. Why do people love that one more than one of my other pieces of content? And see if you can replicate it by making more videos that are similar to that one in um, design, concept, concept, structure, and targeting. Because uh, the chan- your channel, if you learn to listen to it, will tell you when you're doing something right. Uh, videos that get more v- velocity, they seem to come out of the gate and really start taking off either immediately or over time. You start realizing that you've served the needs of that target audience you're trying to reach better with that video than you had with something else. And it's just a matter of tweaking and figuring figuring out, looking at the content, what it was that they loved about that. What were the traffic sources? Was it suggested, recommended browse that got a lot of views for that video? Was it in search? Um, was this a topic that everybody, that suddenly peaked, there was a lot of interest in that period of time? Um, no, no views are guaranteed. Videos have a shelf life. They're going to go up and they're going to come down. So what you want to do is constantly remember that you're trying to always build something new, right? Much like a restaurant, it doesn't matter what meal you made for someone a year ago, right? They might go, that was a great restaurant. We went there a year ago and loved it. What really counts is when they come back, 
What do they get served this time, right? What kind of meal do you put in front of them this time? Do they love it? Is it as good as they remember last time? Do they feel like what they expected when they came back to the restaurant is is being given to them and hopefully even more because a year later you would be better at what you do, that they go, man, this is as good or better than I remember. Same is true with channels. We want to do that. You want to really grab that target audience member and make sure that you're making something new that's going to connect with them. Um, Let's see. We've got a super chat in here. Hold on one second. Did I miss it? Megan, this is what Megan covers for me. She makes sure I'm on top of the game. Uh, Zarps Metal Detecting, SA, Zar. I, 140 Zar. I, 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 God, I don't know what that is. <laughs> but, but it's 140 of them, and I thank you for that. Uh, Daniel, last time I jumped on your stream, uh, my channel was a disaster. Took some of your advice and would love a quick review again. Growing slow, but I think I understand my channel path and target audience. Appreciate it. I'd love to pull it up, Zarps. Let's take a look. Um, let's see. Zarps metal detecting. Now let's see if I can remember the advice I gave you. Though most of the advice, this is the funny thing. When I talk to channels, um, I typically, the it, YouTube treats most channels across the platform the same. It's not like, it's not like, oh, well, I'm a military channel, so, you know, there's a different set of rules for me. Or I'm a history channel, so there's a different set of rules for me. There are a different set of rules for things like kids' channels, kids' content because of COPPA restrictions from the FTC. There are a slightly different set of rules for music channels because of the way they propagate them on the platform. Um, and there's a few distinctions like that, but the vast majority, about 90% of channels that are probably in this chat right now, if not more, all adhere to the same rules. YouTube wants you to bring people to the platform, get them watching content, and keep them watching content so that they can serve them ads along the way and drive revenue. It's as simple as that. Get them watching, keep them watching. Satisfy those viewers. So let's see what you got going on, my friend. I I don't know what the advice I gave you last time, so hopefully I give you something good this time. Um, Metal, so here's one. I would tell you right off the bat, um, I like that it's metal detecting South Africa. I know exactly what this is about. I don't like that this text is going over another branding element here. I don't like, um, okay, so this is probably out of the crop that you put this. This is probably, I would watch this. If I looked at this on desktop, I can see all of this. But I bet you if I looked at this on either um, mobile or tablet, that half of this would be kind of showing, which is weird. So um, I get there's the three of you. This is what the number, and you've got, ha- you've got hashtag team Zarps that means nothing to me. What I would tell you here just for optimization, why don't you guys all sit together and get a great picture together instead of all looking in different directions. This looks like it's a bunch of different pictures cropped together because no one stopped and took a great picture of the three of you, which I assume is Catfish Kyle, the Captain Leon, and Bullet uh, anyone want to pronounce that? T H Y S. This ties tis ties. I don't know what that is. Um, so what I would tell you here is once you get a great picture, metal detecting South Africa is great, and then maybe put this logo. You know, you've already got this right over here, so you don't need that here. Um, metal detecting South Africa is great. Um, and, and then have a great picture of you. You don't need all this other overlapping stuff. My eyes are getting pulled in too many directions. This guy's waving. That guy's looking down at his hands. He's almost kind of pointing over this way, but looking that way. So just in terms of trying to get this together, I'd probably clean up the channel art. Links to all social media. You know my take on that. At 144 subscribers, if you're linking people to all your other sites, you're like, welcome to my channel. Now leave and go to all my other social media sites. Save that stuff for the descriptions of your videos. Don't put it up here. The goal here is to grow the channel. Keep them here. So don't be linking them out to somewhere else. Um, here's a problem. Here's a big problem. Anyone in the chat, can anyone see the problem who's, uh, who's been listening to me scream and hem and haw about these um, about these uh, playlist titles? Anyone in the chat? Can anyone in the chat tell me what you think about these playlist titles and what, what, uh, what the viewer might find problematic with them? Because this is something I, I, um, I talk a lot about. Hey, is that the great Roger Wakefield in our chat right there? Ask him again. And let, I got to tell you, Roger is the perfect example of a guy who's crushing it on the platform. A friend of mine, I got to spend some time with him at the social media marketing world. He's absolutely crushing it on, on YouTube. You type the word plumbing into YouTube, you find Roger Wakefield. That's how good he is at controlling his niche. Really crazy. Um, so anyone talking about, ep- here we go. Episodes of what? Exactly. Not in, not information. 
not attractive, too generalized. This is exactly it. My advice here would be, listen, people, when you build a channel, remember that you have a value proposition. If the value proposition of this channel is um, that you are trying to serve people who have interests in metal detecting, specifically in South Africa, um, that could be anything from great places that they might want to check out, um, great finds, just want, wanting to explore with you as you go to places and metal detect in areas that they may not have access to because they might live on a different content. You might even be giving them some tips about some of the tools you use along the way to make metal detecting easier in general, whether you're metal detecting in South Africa or somewhere else. So as we scroll down, I expect to see playlist titles that reflect that value proposition. So if someone said to me, hey, Daniel, tell me what, that, what this channel's about, and I start taking this out of context, I'd say, oh, it's about episodes. And they would go, Daniel, I have no idea what that means. Well, hold on. It's about live streams. Like, wait a minute. I, I'm still, I'm confused. Tell, tell me what it's about. Oh, I know. It's about product reviews. Well, what kind of products? People, when you make, and Zarb specifically, listen, when you're making your playlist um, uh, titles and descriptions, first of all, there's no descriptions in these playlists. Treat your playlist like you would a video. This is something I want you to all take your pen out and write this down for a minute. When you're building playlists, I want you guys to treat them the same way you would as a video. You wouldn't name a video episodes, right? Because no one would click on that. You'd go, what's well, not specific? Don't treat your channel homepage like a supermarket aisle. Don't just go oh, soup, rice, potatoes, vegetables, right? That doesn't sell, right? You, people come to your channel, they're trying to learn more about what this channel's about, and they're making decisions whether or not they want to, um, to engage, maybe potentially subscribe to your channel. So instead of product reviews, you'd have something like... Um, um, product. Uh, it, it would be more metal detecting, right? So it'd be like... Um, the coolest metal detecting gear that you might want to check out is a much better product review title than product reviews because product reviews tells me nothing. Uh, playlists can get served in search and on that viewer's homepage in browse. So you want to make sure that it's engaging. Uh, if you have other, if you have a playlist that's called live streams, it doesn't tell me anything. Like if it said something like, uh, you know, uh, everything, you know, talking about metal detecting live, then I would go, oh, it's, well, you know, I could take that out of context. And if someone said, what's the channel about? I'll say, let me read a playlist title to you. Talking about metal detecting live. They go, I, I guess it's a metal detecting channel. Bingo. Yes, it is. How about if they said, what's this channel about? And I said, oh, it's about, uh, it's about episodes. Episodes doesn't mean anything to me, right? Um, episodes, it's better replaced by something like our favorite metal detecting adventures, right? Uh, our coolest metal detecting adventures, something like that. Don't just say episodes because if I don't know you, I don't know what episodes are. So everybody, think about every piece of your channel, channel art. Playlist titles, playlist descriptions, thumbnails, video titles, everything that you build, make sure that it supports the value proposition wherever possible and makes it clear to the viewer what the channel is about out of context. Okay, if you can do that, everything starts working together. Otherwise, it just feels like a bunch of stuff stuffed to, stuff together and it doesn't make sense. Of all the channels I've worked with, and I've worked with thousands, um, high performing channels convert 10, 15, and as much as 20% from their channel homepage, meaning people land there and decide to subscribe. So leaving that conversion on the table is a mistake. Make sure you optimize your homepage the same way a big store would optimize their, um, their storefront. They curate the displays. They don't stick everything in the window. They go, wait, let's just put a few cool pieces here so that people walking by glance and go, I'm going in. That looks awesome. Look at the stuff they have. Do the same thing with your with your channel storefront, that homepage. Uh, is this the one? I got some here going on. Uh, hi, Dan. What was that plugin effect you're using to mark up the web page? Uh, did you just do it for Metal Detect? I believe it's called, um, I have to remember now which plugin it is. Hold on one second. I can look. It's called, uh, it's called, let me see. I can share the screen with you. These are my extensions. Uh, it's called, do, 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 page marker. So the extension is right here. It won't let me do it because I'm on a set developer mode. It's called Page Marker Draw on Web. So Page Marker is the is the app I'm using. Uh, it's just a browser extension. It's totally free. So just go into the and for me it was Chrome. So just go into the Chrome extensions if you're using Google Chrome. Uh, Page Marker is the one you want to look at. Uh, we also seem to have some new members here. Is that what I'm missing? Oh, pardon my scroll. I talk so much I miss some things. Uh, Megan. 
Tell me where they are. <laughs> Listen, I'm scrolling. Okay. Oh, wait a minute. We got Roger Wakefield. Look at this. The new member. Roger, you know, I appreciate that support, my friend. Um, I'll make sure I invite you into our, into our Facebook members only group. For people who are members, we actually have a special Facebook group where we sit there and we talk, um, we talk uh, channel growth strategies all the time. It's in the Perks membership um, tab of my channel. Um, but I don't know. I can't believe I haven't had you in there yet, Roger, just because I love talking to you. Um, but also welcome uh, J-Rock Gaming. Um, J-Rock, weren't you already a member? I feel like we've talked so much that you were. In either case, my friend, um, go to the memberships tab of, of my channel, and you'll see there's all the perks there. Click on that. You can see all the content that's for members only. We do members only live streams. And um, there's a link to join the Facebook group. Definitely, even if you hate Facebook, just join for the group. Uh, because the group's fantastic. We've got all kinds of people in there from Dara Leaves, Nick Nim and Dean Nim and uh, Roberto Blake, Brian G. Johnson, a lot of my own um, coaching clients who are all, you know, a lot of them are, are silver play button content creators who are all bringing their own knowledge to the table. Um, this week we have, uh, or the next week we're going to be bringing in uh, my friend Justin Moore, who's going to be speaking at VidCon this year. He is a um, brand sponsorship expert. I've been on his channel before. He's going to do a members only live stream with me, teaching creators how to get the brand deals that they want in maximize the deals that they put together with brands and sponsors. This is the place you want to be. If you're not a member, you should be because the content we do there, which is members only is phenomenal, really phenomenal. Uh, let me see. Let me check this one out. Uh, Rye Ro Rye Robio. Rye Robio. Am I saying that right? Rye Robio. If I'm not, I apologize. Would love a channel review. You recently had to take a break doing to have surgery catching COVID. Uh, you and me both. I'm COVID positive right now as we speak. Uh, that's why I'm sniffling a little bit. I, I'm past the point where it's contagious, um, but I went off to social media marketing world, and then the second half of my trip, I had a vacation planned out to Las Vegas and Arizona, um, and I spent the entire time in a hotel by myself because I brought my own testing kits, and I, and I started feeling a little sniffly after the event, tested twice, and sure enough, I was positive. Thankfully, I was vac vaccinated uh, and boosted, so it's been more like a cold, um, but really fatigued, so I feel your pain, man. I hope you're... Um, I hope you're okay. I don't know what the surgery was, but I hope you're okay from that. Um, yeah, it's tricky. Um, so let me look at your channel. As we were saying before, uh, you were asking about a channel review. Is anything specific, Ryrobio? Um, I can take a quick peek, but if you have specific things that, that are um, problematic, it's easier for me to point them out because I, I want to be able to get as many as possible. Um, but let me pull up your channel. Let's just take a look at what your channel is and, and let everybody else take a peek at the same time. Um, so right here, first of all, um, oh, I like what you got going on here. Um, Rye Robio, uh, the one problem I have is watch how, watch the font here is a little tricky to read. Um, but I'm getting it now. Helping introverts stay confident, uh, stay confident, um, Rye Robio. Uh, you've got three different images here looking different directions. Not terrible. Um, I probably would get rid of this stuff over here, the Instagram and stuff, because you're only at 521 subscribers. Is the goal of your channel to grow Instagram? Probably not. Your goal of your channel is to grow the channel, so get rid of any of this. Um, I love the idea of, of, but it's just helping introverts stay confident. It feels more like helping introverts probably find confidence, right? Like to be confident. So I might change this a little bit, but I love the idea of it. Um, as I look into the channel itself, I'm just trying to figure out what's been doing well for you. Again, same thing. Um, playlists. Uploads doesn't help me. Your top playlist is uploads. I would, I would much rather have you take soft spoken saga, be heard, which is a little um, clever. Try not to be so clever that it's hard for me to understand this is about introverts. Don't be afraid um, to, to spell it out a little more clearly for the person who just came here and has no idea what your channel's about. Um, you know, soft spoken saga, be heard. I kind of get it, but I would much rather have this be up top, right? Right when I land on your channel instead of uploads, because uploads doesn't help me understand your channel. But I do like um, uh, shyness saga. You're doing sagas. Be careful here, this saga stuff. I don't think that that's terrible, but I love the don't hide, be heard. Um, Think about, think about being a little bit more plain in the delivery there. Um, struggling with shyness, don't hide, would be better than shyness saga. Because I don't know what saga you're talking about. Your saga, I like, if it's all about, I'm, you're trying to speak to me as an introvert, especially trying to reach introverts, 
then you need to speak their language. What are they thinking? I struggle with shyness. I struggle with always being really soft spoken. So talk about struggling with be, struggling with being soft spoken? Question mark. Be heard. Struggling with being sh- struggling with shyness. Don't hide. Like I love that idea. So I think you're almost there. Um, thumbnails look pretty solid. Um, the same thing. Be careful with ma- putting so much, so many elements in your thumbnail that it pulls your eye in too many directions. I like that you can be loud. Like that you can be loud is good. You will be heard is good. Speak up. I'm trying. I think you're really close here, but sometimes simplifying just a bit. Let me give you an example. Everybody in the chat room, can you guys see this okay? See how many elements are going on back here. Um, say cow, you, the cow is in the background. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> You didn't create any depth in this. Everything is like, it's just a lot of things pulling my eye in different directions. So try to simplify wherever possible and realize that a thumbnail is almost like a billboard that you'd see on the highway, okay? And I say this a lot. If if McDonald's is introducing, again, they're bringing back the, the McRib, right? If you're driving on the highway, they don't put up a, uh, a billboard that's like coming again on August 22nd, McDonald's would like to introduce the McRib, rib, a fan specialty that you've all enjoyed over the, you would never read all that. If there was a hundred images in that, you'd be like, that, that's bad marketing. What they would probably do is have a giant picture of the McRib and they would put coming August 23rd and you like, you know, McRib coming August 23rd, just keep it simple. Get to the point. Don't try to overcomplicate imagery or titles. The more you can simplify and make it easy for the viewer to understand, the more effectively you can connect with them. Okay. So I love a lot of what you got going on. Some of these videos have driven thousands of views. So they're connecting, um, assuming those are all organic views. Stay on that, simplify and be compelling. Think about what introverts are really freaking out about. Are they really having trouble with shyness or being or being soft spoken? If they are, then get those up to the top of your channel homepage and start talking about that. Look at which content on your channel is performing better than other uh, others. If you if when you talk about shyness seems to be more uh, drive more views than when you talk about being soft spoken, then work more with the idea of being shy and how to deal with that. If soft spoken seems to drive more views, then lean on that. Learn the language of your target audience and which pieces of the puzzle seem to connect with them more and double down on them. Uh, hold on one second. Let me find where I'm at. Yo, am I caught up? I'm trying to catch up. Okay, here we go. KLC Ken. Oh, here's another tip. Could I get a little, here's another tip. Can I get a channel, a little channel tips as well? KLC Ken, yeah, I'll pull you up. Um, I do tend to uh, pull up the um, uh, Super Chats first. Let me see what you got going on. Oh, you got a pretty good channel here, my friend. KLC Ken. Um, let me bring this up over here. KLC Ken. So a little channel tips. Okay, number one. Here's the problem. I'm guessing you're a landscaping. Um, I'm guessing you're a landscaping company based on the KLC. This looks like it's your business. Here's the problem I'm having. I recognize the trucks, but you don't have any value proposition written up here. I love this as a background image, but I feel like you didn't complete this. Remember that this is going to get cropped for mobile somewhere around here and here. So, you know, half of your truck will be missing. I would probably put KLC Ken. Um, let's, you know, what is this? Hold on. Let me see if I can figure out what the channel's about. Uh, determination and persistence are the best tools you can have. You can fix anything. Videos to help you with the day struggles of operating a small landscaping business. Man, you took, I had to read so many words to realize that you're talking about running a landscaping business. Let me tell you something. I would tell you, um, our friend Roger Wakefield is in the chat or was in the chat. Let me tell you something. If your target audience is people who are trying to run a landscaping business, you're limiting yourself. You're going to be limiting yourself a lot. And this is the same thing I talked about when we were talking about architectural sheet metal. Listen, Roger Wakefield owns plumbing on YouTube, and he is a plumber out of Texas. But what he didn't try to do is teach people how to be professional plumbers because that's a very limited target audience. What he tried to do is talk about plumbing and plumbing issues and help people better understand simple things, how to fix a leaky toilet, right? Things, simple things that would, that would reach a very broad target audience. So if your channel is about landscaping, then what you should be doing 
is giving out landscaping tips to become a, an authority in the space of landscaping. So you should be talking about, you know, what's the right fertilizers to learn to put on your lawn? You know, what's the best, what's the best, uh, you know, to, to, to tell me all the things, the best mulch, the, 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 the best mulch that keeps its color the longest or whatever a homeowner might be thinking about, right? What's the right way to, um, to keep you to trim hedges back to keep them from dying. How much you know? What's the right way to trim a limb off of a tree without killing the tree? I would be researching everything people wanted to know about landscaping, common questions, and then I would be going out and trying to put that um, on my channel because I know that the target audience is interested in it. Here's a real easy way to figure that out: landscaping. I'm going to put landscaping into Google. Okay, just the word landscaping. I put the word landscaping into Google and I scroll down. I will all of a sudden start getting people also ask, what does landscaping consist of? What are the different types of landscaping? What is an example of landscaping, right? So I would start doing that like planting, uh, planting. Maybe there's plantings because maybe planting is part of what you got to do. Um, so maybe when you're planting things, what are the, what are the steps of planting? What is the importance of planting? What's a good plant right now? I would be investigating everything I could to learn about what landscaping is about. I'd be putting the words like mulch, of grass, lawn, fertilizers, and I'd be finding out what people also ask and trying to learn what their highest interests are in the conversations and then give them generalized tips that reach a broadest target audience. What's the right way to get your lawn ready for the winter? What's the, you know, all of these different things that someone might be thinking about when it comes to landscaping. So you're literally not trying to teach other landscapers. You're trying to teach people about landscaping. Does it make sense? Not just landscapers, people who are interested in learning about landscapers. Uh, really quickly, I got to say SM uh, postcards, welcome to the battalion. Make sure you go to the memberships tab of my channel and that you, uh, you join our Facebook group. The links are all there into the, into the perks. Uh, I'm glad to have you on board, my friend. Uh, let me see. Where am I at right now? What am I missed? Uh, J-Rock uh, says, Daniel, I feel stuck with my channel. Feels like no matter what I do or try, I can't get much traction. Can you take a look at my channel, offer some advice? Sure I can. Let's take a look. J-Rock. Uh, J-Rock Gaming. Let's make sure I can find it. Gaming is a tough niche because there's a ton of interest in it. But one of the things I always say to people is with gaming, you can't just be a gaming channel. I think what happened is gaming is so popular that people see other gaming channels and go, oh, I see what they're doing. I see what Jacksepticeye is doing. I see, I see what, um, you know, what PewDiePie used to do. Um, they just go on and they play the game. That doesn't do it. That's how Mr. Beast started, and he struggled, struggled to grow. I got my silver play button long before Mr. Beast did because he was struggling trying to do something that he was he wasn't great at. And it wasn't until he found his groove. Now he crushes everybody. He's the, you know, he, he really found something that was better than just gaming tips and gameplay. You know, you have to understand who you're trying to reach. If you're coming to the gaming world, you need to be specific and make sure that someone comes to your channel and goes, oh, there's a lot of gaming channels out there. Why would I subscribe to this one? Okay. So let's take a quick look at your channel here, J Rock. Call of Duty, Warzone, Pacific, tips and info, new videos every week. Building a supportive community of Warzone players of all it. Wow, so much text. <clears throat> well, first of all, you got to slow this down. you got way too much text in your channel art. You're asking too many things. Like I would have said, what is this? Uh, is it Call of Duty? Is it specific to Call of Duty? If you're doing specific Call of Duty, um, I would lose everything in there except for Call of Duty, Warzone, Pacific, and I would have been like, um, tips, tricks, and gameplay, and that would be it, right? Um, and and I would leave that simple so people knew that you're really dealing on Call of Duty, Warzone, Pacific, Pacific. Man, I stopped speaking today. Um, another thing, merch. Buy me a coffee. Go to Twitter. Go to Instagram. Oh my God, too many links. Too many links. Stop sending people off platform. The goal of your channel right now, while it's small, is to grow the channel. Get rid of all of that stuff. Save that for the, 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 you know, you're asking all of these things. Welcome to my channel. Now buy my merch. Now buy me a coffee. Now join me on Twitter. Now follow me on Instagram. Like, holy guacamole, you're asking too much. Step number one, channels need to provide for the needs of the viewer. And the needs of the viewer is they don't need to buy you a coffee. They don't need to buy your merch. They don't need to follow you on, follow you on Twitter. What they need is to know why this channel is something they would come back to tomorrow. Now, if you've got videos on here that really show, again, I, these are the same things I'm seeing. Uploads, created playlists. 
What I would tell you, J-Rock, is you need to explain to me why I would follow you based on these playlists that are right here. They're not saying anything to me like, you know, they're not, not like how to get your first wins, uh, how to master, how, you know, how, uh, how, to beat, how to beat any level in, you know, in Call of Duty Warzone. You know, that's what I'm looking for. I want, I want you to speak to me so that if I'm someone who doesn't have a, t- you know, who's really interested in this game, but maybe has been struggling with it, if, I, if I've mastered this game, I'm not going to watch your channel. I'll tell you that right now. Much like the landscaping channel. If I'm a professional landscaper, I don't need someone to teach me how to be a professional landscaper. I'm already there. But if I'm someone who's really interested in, I just found this game, I'm really digging it, and I'm struggling with some of the levels, or I'm struggled, struggling beating some of the uh, uh, the other, you know, whatever, finding some of the weaponry or whatever that thing might be, if you've got tips and tricks that can help me be a better player, then give me that, right? Show me some of that. Or make it compelling and interesting. One of the things that I heard Daryl Eve say that I thought was – one of the best piece of advice I ever heard. Um, it was about six or eight months ago. Someone, we were on a, a stream together and someone had asked like, well, how do I, if, what if I'm a gaming channel? What can I, how can I stand out? And he goes, forget about the game. Make it about, make it about the, you know, the compelling factor. He said, what you ought to do is get on a treadmill with the controller playing the game and have one of your other friends get on another treadmill while playing the same game. And then every time one of you guys dies, you have to increase the level and speed up the treadmill and then see who can play the longest before they get tossed off the treadmill. I thought that was genius, right? And then you would then you could package it as such where you've done something different. Now you're watching not just someone play a game, but challenging another opponent, opponent watching that you could have that up on the screen, watching you guys do run on a treadmill until someone finally is the thing's going so fast they can't keep up and they get knocked off. That kind of stuff is thinking outside of the box. That's how you be different. That's how you approach a channel in a different way. If you're just doing gameplay and you expect uploads and created playlists to get you there, it's not going to do it. You've got to make sure that that viewer sees something different in your gaming channel that they either haven't seen before or you have to be such an advanced player that people are into that game that they go, he's the best. He's the best player. But that's one of the hardest things to do to be the best player out there. So you're much better off trying to find new ways to be very clear in your channel and also come at it at a different angle. Teach people something. Think about the viewer. What does the viewer gain from watching this other than sitting watching you play the game? Got to make sure that that's coming across, okay? That's where I put most of my effort. And thank you for the super uh, twenty dollars super chat, my friend. That means a lot. Um, we have some some uh, re- of my pal Foot Doctor Zach uh, throwing me a super chat. Glad to see you streaming, brother. Thank you, uh, Zach. It's good to see you. Another one of my coaching clients who is crushing it on YouTube. When you talk about different Zach, do you mind if I pull up your channel to give them ex- an example? Zach is someone who is an actual foot doctor, um, and when he started, um, his channel was um, it was a little different. It was. Um, he focused more. He's a he's a foot doctor, but he played uh, he was like uh, played tennis a lot in college, and he talked about shoes, but it was more tennis driven. And I realized really quickly, like he wanted he came to me. We've done a couple of consultations, and the thing that made Zach stand out. Um, I don't mean to pick on you, Zach, because you're doing so well now. I just want to talk about some of the things we worked through. Um, his his channel didn't represent what was really unique about him. One, he was a foot doctor. I made him make sure that his channel was called Foot Doctor Zach. Right, it was like there's this tennis thing that was in there originally. Just foot doctor Zach. Let them know you're a foot doctor. And what he does on his channel is he reviews different types of athletic shoes. But he gets these shoes like pretty far in advance. He'll get these shoes when no one else can get them. And you know what he does? He cuts them wide open. He just takes a knife with like a $200 pair of shoes, slices them in half, and then shows the audience how the shoe is constructed so that they, from the perspective of an actual foot doctor who knows how some shoes can either help or hurt performance or help or hurt, uh, you know, or compel injuries. Like, what's a better shoe? How is it constructed? So when Zach started working on his channel and we started working together, the first thing I said to him, Zach... Yeah, he, I would watch his videos and he'd be like, here's the shoe. And then he cut to a scene where the shoe was cut open. I'm like, J- Zach, you cut that shoe in half. He's like, yeah, I did. I'm like, you need to show that. That's the most, that's what sets you apart. I want to see you slicing that shoe open and I want to see you ripping that thing apart. And now if you look at in his packaging, you know, sneaker tech from the inside out, right? Great, because that's truly it. And you can see here that he's got like the sneakers where he actually will wear one and then cut one in half. And it's literally his foot in the shoe cut in half. And he literally, that's become his thumbnail style. 
Look at three months ago, over over a quarter million views from three months ago, where he took the Nike LeBron 19 performance from the inside out, cut that shoe right wide open. And when we started working on the content, I made him like get right to that, like show them that you cut that open. So someone who loves that shoe, probably been saving up for it. They watch your video. You go, here's the shoe, and then immediately ruins it and cuts it in half. I tell you, this is one of the smartest creators out there because he came to the uh, the world of shoe reviews and sneaker tech and blew it up, blew it up. And look at the views he's getting. I mean, hundreds of thousands of views. He's, his his um, subscriber count was, you know, he was in the single digit thousands. Now he's at almost 40,000. Congrats on all this. Just crushing it, crushing it, um, doing all the right things. So congrats to you, Zach. Thank you for letting me pull up your channel. But a, another guy that really, he, when he figured out how to connect, um, it took a few consultations that he and I did, but once he really dialed it in and once he really said, I get it, I know what my allure is, I know what the value is for the target audience, show them this, these sneakers from the inside out and make sure that that's evident from the minute they land on my channel to the minute they see the title, from the minute they start watching the video, they're watching me cut it open, they know I'm a foot doctor, they know this is coming from a professional, um, and they get to see sneaker reviews in a way no one else does. Genius, genius stuff. That's the kind of stuff that changes the world, um, that makes a, a shoe channel in this day and age stand out from another shoe channel. Um, architectural sheet metal, going on a limb, but how, how about compare my channel to Roger's show the difference to an audience? I won't do that specifically. Um, it's just, I've, I've, I've talked about, I appreciate the super chat, but here's the thing. I can show you Roger's channel. I can show you what Roger's done. Um, and Roger is a guy who... Um, I think I'm allowed to say this. I think he told. I, I think I'm allowed to, to spread out. Roger Dutt has done so well on YouTube that he told me in one year alone, just from sponsorship deals, and he's got a a major plumbing outfit that that I think he may have sold part of it out now, in Texas. He told me straight out, um, I made more in sponsorship brand deals. I made eight times more in sponsorship and brand deals in one year than I made the entire year in my plumbing outfit. And he's got an established plumbing outfit in Texas. That's the power of, of doing YouTube effectively. Um, I can show you some of the things that Roger's done. I'm not going to compare your channels, but I'll absolutely pull up Roger's. Let me show you, let me show you this one here. Let me show you this thing. Hold on. Um, let me go back. I want to make sure you can see what I'm talking about here. Let me pull up um, this. Let me put the word plumbing. Just plumbing into YouTube. Look who I get. Number two video, Roger Wakefield. That's how powerful he is. That's how powerful. Let me go. Five tips. There's our pal. Can't miss him with that mustache. Roger Wakefield. Roger just really figured out how to dominate and get to the top of search for plumbing. And he'll tell you that. And people go like, what's your channel? He goes, just put plumbing. Just put plumbing into YouTube. You'll find me. Um, but one of the things Roger does really well, like, listen, look at his channel. Here's all Roger Wakefield. He does not even have his channel name up in the channel art. It just says all about plumbing. And there's Roger with a giant pipe wrench. Done, right? And now he does things that he thinks about the viewer, right? He thinks about how he can talk to the viewer. Um, let me look at some of the videos that he's done. Let me put these in most popular. Um, Real plumber tries awful plumber plumbing hacks. That's one of his videos. So how does he speak to the, the most amount of people. Well, he's going to give you his opinion as a real plumber looking at some of these crazy hacks that people say, oh, here's a quick way to you know, unclog your toilet or whatever it is. Roger's going to react to those as a real plumber. Um, and look at the kind of views he's got. 4.1 million views because it reaches a really broad target audience. He's not trying to reach professional plumbers. He's trying to reach people who may have seen a silly plumbing hack that he's going to say, oh, yeah, let's, let's put that to the test. Let me give you a real plumber, plumber's um, perspective on whatever this plumbing hack is. And he does tries awful plumbing hacks. 3.1 million views. How to fix a running toilet guaranteed DIY plumbing. Roger standing there, DIY plumbing, showing the toilet tank cut open. Speaking to the thing that a lot of people have probably dealt with. If you've ever owned a home, rented a home, lived in a home with a toilet that seems to keep running, you flush it, but then it turns back on, it keeps running. Here's Roger, not trying to teach you how to be an expert plumber. He's trying not, not trying to teach you how to do plumbing for a living. He's trying to teach you things that most the most amount of people would come in contact with. A leaky faucet, a running toilet, uh, a shower valve that keeps dripping. These are the kind of things that he talks about. Scams, uh, different types of product. Does Green Gobbler even work? Which is a product you put down the drain. Three million views a year ago. He's showing you, you may have heard of this product a bunch of times. 
I'm going to test, I'm going to test it out as a real plumber and see, does it really work? This is the kind of simple messaging and straightforward content creation that, that really connects with his target audience. That's the kind of thing that he understands. His target audience are people who are interested in the conversation of plumbing. And he tries to hit a lot of those bases in there, not teach you advanced plumbing on a, you know, high rise building. Not many people are interested in that. What people are interested in is, hey, does this product work? I saw it on TV. It says it's supposed to clean. My, my drain's been running slow. Does this fix it? Here's an expert plumber to give it a try and let you know what he thinks. Genius, genius, genius stuff, okay? Um, brand deals work. Roger will tell you. Roger will tell you. Um, Roger also speaks. Here's, I'm going to show you one dichotomy, too. I want you to think about this. Roger, what he does on his channel versus what Roger does outside of his channel are often two very different things. Roger speaks at a lot of the events that I go to. Um, and it's really awesome because when he goes to events, he speaks to other people about how to bring, um, their companies and trades to YouTube and to social media. So the thing he does outside of YouTube is part of what he does on YouTube, but it's the other side of it, teaching people to find the success and use social media in a way that they can actually grow their own authority. Um, so he teaches what he actually does on YouTube to other people who are in the trade. So I've always said to anybody in the trades, architectural sheet metal, follow Roger and pay attention to what he's doing and how he's simplifying it because he's taking high level concepts and breaking them down because plumbing can get very intense, but he's keeping it simple and he's trying to reach the most amount of people based on the broadest portion of that conversation. Genius, genius, please follow him. And also just check out some of the way he's just building things. Real smart, real simple, real compelling. We've I've seen him do ones where, what did you do, Roger? It was like putting Orbeez down a, 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 a sink and then he had like a clear, the, he had built the whole trap in, in like the see-through section so you could actually see what was going on inside and were they pl plugging up and what was happening. He was putting stuff like those disposable, you know, wipes down, um, you know, through a toilet and it came out to a bucket like he propped up a, build a whole stage prop where you'd flush the toilet but it would come out to a bucket and then show you what the disposable bathroom wipe looked like on the other end when it fell into the bucket and if it was actually falling apart or causing a problem with the plumbing. Just real smart stuff that people think about every day. Should I flush this? Will it hurt my plumbing? Roger will talk about that. Smart, 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 smart. <laughs> You're free to critique me too. I like how I asked permission after I was already doing it. <laughs> Thanks, Roger. I love you, pal. Um, uh, hey, Yvonne, how you doing? Happy you're feeling better. Thanks so much for being an amazing resource. Thank you for the super chat. It was great seeing you at Social Media Marketing World. We, had a, uh, hug, we were able to get a hug in at the restaurant um, afterwards. Uh, yeah, I, I appreciate that. Yvonne's in, in the battalion members group too. She'll tell you, if this is a process. Um, the thing that I try to do in helping creators is we're always working towards trying to figure out how to help creators find their own voice in the conversation and do it more effectively. Realize who you're trying to reach and do it more effectively. That's the trick. I think too many creators get wrapped up in, what, what do I got to do to get YouTube to recommend me? It's simple. You got to get people to start watching your videos because that's what YouTube's paying attention to. So the trick is, what do I got to do to get to make sure my target audience that I'm trying to reach starts clicking on my videos and watching them? And that's all about connection. That's what we work on 99% of the time in group. Um, let's see, Roger Wakefield. Thank you. Just chasing you. Oh yeah. <laughs> he's, uh, he's the best man, Zach. Uh, Roger's just, uh, one of those guys that any creator can learn something from because he's so good at it. Um, let's see. What was that? I'll be in a call with you soon. I think our last call finally got into my hand and clicked. It takes a bit, doesn't it? Hey, don't feel bad. Like, uh, you know, whether we're doing private consultations or whether we're in group or whether we're here in live streams, Zach will tell you this. Zach literally had a post where he's like, this, he showed a graph. He's like, you can see here on this graph of my channel growth where I had consulted with Daniel like two or three times and this is where it really clicked for me. And all of a sudden his channel just shot up in, in subscribers, watch time views. It just exploded because it's, it's never like, oh, you know, use red in your thumbnail or, you know, it's never one thing. It's about, it's about finding the conversation you want to be in, finding your own voice in that conversation, and then perfecting the own, your way that you connect with your target audience. Roger has done it really well. Foot Dr. Zach has done it really well. Um, guys in my group like uh, Hank Hamilton from Hamiltonville Farms. 
um, Alton the Dog Father, Dog Father Barbecue, um, uh, Glam Girl Gabby. Uh, we just have, you know, there's just so many, there's so many um, great creators we have that just really have figured out how to connect. And that's the trick is just getting really good at the conversation you want to be in. And if you can do that and if you can refine it, that's where, um, that's where you'll, you really start seeing some growth in a way that, that uh, can take your channel to the next level. Um, let me just, I'm quickly taking a look here in the chat. Uh, Megan, did I miss anything in there? You're always the one who, uh, I got two, two, two super chats. Is that what you're telling me? Okay. <laughs> I'm like, I got to scroll. I got to scroll. You let me know. Um, let me see. I have one here. Um, motivation theory. That's one of them. That's my pal, John. Does my value proposition come through immediately on my channel now? I removed everything that does not. Let me take a peek, John. Uh, motivation theory running. Um, I, you know, obviously your channel name, motivation theory running is great. Uh, you know, I love that. Um, one of the things I would say here, John, motivation theory running, run, rest, repeat, tips, motivation, Strava, join the club, new videos weekly. I probably think that the channel art is a little, at, at a glance, if I just glanced at it, I would think this might be more about travel or mountain resorts or something like that. So I would probably tell you, um, simplify the imaging, even though you do have some running stuff like shoes in the background. See if you can simplify um, the messaging in the channel art so that in a minute, like what is you, I know you used to do ultra marathons, but it's really running. I know you did ultra marathons before, but think about what that looks like. What, you know, what that really feels like. You've got a lot of great thumbnails that show runners that represent running. Let's make sure that your channel art represents that too, John. Um, ultra marathon races and running strategy. Love that playlist title. Um, how to start running again after a long break. Boy, you know what? I would probably reverse these, John. Um, I would, I think that this might be more important than ultra marathon races and running strategy. Consider that when you build your channel homepage, that this is what we call above the fold. Someone probably clicked your name. They saw a video and went, that's kind of cool. I wonder what his channel's like. They click, they get brought here. The benefits of running, great video, right, for someone who's um, watching your channel. They see the very first playlist strategy. Are they going to be more interested in ultra marathon races, which I know that's part of your channel, but I don't even know if you run these anymore. Or are they going to be more interested in what's going to reach the broader target audience, John? How to start running again after a long break. Think about what we talked about with like Roger. Remember how Roger's a professional plumber. There's nothing he can't do in any building when it comes to plumbing. But is he talking about how to, you know, plumb a high rise skyscraper? No, he's talking about how to fix a leaky toilet. He's talking about, you know, drain cleaners and do they work? So think about the same things that the way that Roger applies himself. John, I think the value about running is here, but I think where it's a little mixed messaging is you do ultra marathons, it's running. Really, your channel is, is the conversation of running, and I want you to really think about who your target audience is. Is it only people who are going to do ultra marathons, or is it just people who are interested in running in general um, and want to learn more about it and the safe way to do it and the safe way to practice? I know a lot of your running is not sort of that street running. It's sort of, what do they, I don't know what they actually call it, but you're more sort of that, you know, off-road running. So I would figure out a way to really make sure that that's clear um, when you're talking about the benefits, how to start running again. All of these things that people might be thinking, there's plenty of people. I used to be a long-distance runner when I was in high school, so how to start running again after a long break would appeal to me. So think about that, my friend. Think about how you can really appeal to, um, to the broadest target audience who is interested in the idea of running, okay? Nail that target audience. And make sure you understand. Define that audience first, John. Let's make sure that you go... Um, that you say, I know exactly who my target audience is. Is it ultra marathon runners or is it just runners, people interested in running? And I think it's the latter, um, to be fair. All right, I'm scrolling a bit. I'm trying to play catch up here. Um, let's see, there were the ones before there. I asked Evie, I got, let me see, here was one here, JFH. Hey, could you please give me some advice? Sure. Your, um, your sketches here need to be better. Those stick figures, I'm, I'm not loving them. I think you can do better. I think you can put a little hair, maybe some eyes. <laughs> oh, not that kind of advice. You probably meant channel advice. Thank you for the super chat. I'll take a quick peek. Um, let me see. JFH. If I can find your channel. Sometimes channels don't pull up if they're a smaller channel. Uh, but I will try. I'm looking for the stick figure JFH. Um, I'm not seeing it. Uh, JFH, if you, want to, um, if you want to put a link to your channel in the, um, in the chat, uh, mods, please don't kill his link if JFH puts it up. No one else start dropping links. 
uh, I'll see if I can uh, I see if I can find your channel. It's not pulling up in search, so if, if it's hard for me to find it, then uh, just drop a link in the chat. Um, who else am I talking about? Um, did we get Can Fly? I don't know if we Can Fly Washington became a new member. Hey, make sure anyone who's a new member, I appreciate you joining in. Go to the memberships tab of my channel, and I want you to. Um, check out all the new perks that are there. There's content just for you. Make sure you sign up for the Facebook group. We do members-only live streams to keep an eye out for. They'll be announced in my tab, and only you will see them as a member. Now that you've joined, you'll see the alerts come up for them. But uh, welcome to the battalion. Glad to have you here. Um, I'm catching up. I'm catching up. What is it? Ask your computer guy. Did I mean that? Did I miss that one too? Um, Ask your computer guy says, 60 second peak, thumbnails, content, am I too niche? And do I need to niche out instead? I try to make every suggestion, uh, I try to make every suggestion I can find just crawling. Yeah, let me take a look, buddy. Um, ask your computer guy. Uh, all right. So the question is, you asked is, are you too niche? Um, let me see, let's, let's take a look. Let's see what you guys think out there. Um, ask your computer guy com because computers don't always play nice. I love that idea. I love the idea of computers don't always play nice. That's true, right? Like, what's the most common thing? Is like, you know, I'm not a computer genius. My my computer's like giving me trouble. Um, Microsoft Office versus Apache Open Office, which is better? That got sixteen thousand views, so people were interested in it. The same thing I tell you here. I get picky on this. Like, if you're a huge channel, um, I would say to you. Um, you know, I'm not going to pick on, I go to sometimes like Mr. Beast channel and he'll put uploads or popular uploads, but he's very popular. He drives 40 million views. Um, you, if you're, if you're not as popular, what I and you're trying to grow your channel, uh, if you don't have 10 million subscribers and you don't have hundreds of millions of views, probably get rid of popular uploads and uploads. Let's go with, I would rather see here playlists that talk to, that don't say tips, tricks, and more, because I don't know what that's about. Tips, tricks, and more could be skateboarding tips, tricks, right? I don't know that. Windows troubleshooting is better. I think that's better. Um, the Windows troubleshooting could probably be better. Like uh, having trouble with Windows 11, uh, you know, that could be it. Having trouble with Windows 11 and then put the description on. Make sure you use descriptions in your playlist saying, if you've been having trouble with Windows, Windows 11, I'll walk through some of the most common pre problems people have been having once they've uh, downloaded the new Windows 11. Boom. Then you have all different videos talking about Windows 11 and going through, you know, what they need to know, maybe how to download it, how to troubleshoot it, how to update it, things like that. Um, virus and mal malware removal is cool, but it's, again, it's rice, corn. It's just, it's, it's, you wouldn't name a video virus and malware removal. You'd probably name it something like, um, like this, stop, like this one, stop malware running on your computer, right? Right. That's what you want to talk about. So be more compelling. Make sure you treat your playlist titles like you do your video titles, make them super compelling and put descriptions, descriptions, and let's get them up near the top. Um, other than that, you know, what I would do is I tell you, pay attention to, um, I love this trick. Go to your videos tab, go to most popular, assuming these are all organic. What I look for is yes, you've got stuff from a year ago. Are you too niche? No, it looks like you're talking about computers, specifically PC and windows installation. Doesn't seem too bad. I'm um, finding the stuff that's really connecting. I've got your highest performing is Windows black screen. Windows 11 is here. That's from nine months ago. That's great to see your second highest performing video is within the last year. How to bypass Windows 10, Windows Office. So when you really talk about Windows as a, as a larger problem, that seems to do better than um, stuff like, I'm looking for something else from a year ago, how I created the, how I created the Jeff Dunham with Bernie pick, right, Photopia. Okay, here's a problem. If you're teaching people about computers and you suddenly start doing very specific how I did a, how I used a free photo editor, and not only that, how I used a free photo editor to create a Bernie uh, Sanders meme, that is so specific, that is too niche. That does not serve the needs of your target audience. If I'm someone who's trying to learn how to fix my computer, I don't care about Photopea. I don't care about that. You're not a photo editing channel. You're a computer fix it channel. So talk to me about things that are in your lane. Stay in your lane. Um, Excel for dummies, smarter. And you can see you only got 422 views a year ago. <clears throat> I think that's one of those things. Um, be careful of getting pulled, getting derailed. If you made a cool meme that people like, don't feel like you need to talk about it on your channel. If you went on a great vacation with your family, that doesn't mean you need to go talk about it on your channel. If your channel is about teaching people how to deal with computer issues, stick to computer issues and do research that finds um, the issues that they seem to be talking about the most. Hopefully, relative to tentpole events, you should be surging around the times when a new Windows product is, is 
um, is released. If there's a new Windows update, make sure you're talking about it. Make sure you're talking about new Windows update solves this this common problem. And then don't tell them what the problem is. And then they go, what problem? Is that the one I've been having? I need to click and watch this video. So I think in general, you're doing a good job. Ask your computer guy. Congratulations on over 1,000 subscribers. Congratulations on driving over 40,000 views on a video. But see if you can dial away some of the Bernie stuff. See if you can get the playlist pulled in. Um, I like a lot of the thumbnails. I like that you're testing sort of different styles to see what works. Um, simpler seems to be better. Um, readable text is better. I, I like a lot of what you're doing here. Just be, um, uh, when you talk about viruses um, that are showing around Android, uh, be careful here. Android virus is back. Is it Android? If that's an Android vi virus that's specific to mobile devices, then that's probably not your computer guy because computers don't play. That's for mobile devices. That's not computer stuff. So even though, be careful because if this video continues to get served out, people go, yeah, I'm here. For, I have an Android device. I don't even use a computer. I, I, they do everything on my Android. They don't care about the rest of your content. And if that gets served out, tomorrow YouTube's going to try to serve out one of your Windows videos and the guy's going to go, that person's going to say, I'm not interested. I'm not going to click. And even though your other video might be great, you fragmented your audience. So make sure you're staying true to the value prop of the, of the channel. If it's about helping people with computers, make sure you say to yourself, does this video help people uh, with their computers? Because computers don't always play nice. If it does, make the video. If it doesn't, don't make that video. Um, let's see. Homekeeping channel became a YouTube member. I feel like you're already in it once. If you if you haven't been, welcome. Uh, make sure you check out the memberships tab on my channel. Uh, if uh, if you have been, then welcome back. Some of these faces I talk to on so many different platforms and in comments sections that sometimes I just feel you're like you're already a member. Um, but welcome either way. Uh, let me see. I'm diving around. Megan, who have I missed? Um, Natalie Heels. Let me see if I can pull up. Uh, was it, you have the chats on that? Let's see. Uh, one second here. I'm going to try to copy this link address. I did find, Megan found the link to JFH who gave us a super chat. Okay. Here you are, JFH. Um, this is a typical example of a channel that does not speak to the viewer. I come here and your channel says subscribe for more videos. I, I haven't even, you haven't given me a thing yet and you're asking for something. You're saying, hey, subscribe to my channel. Why? Why would I? I don't even know what the channel's about. It's a big black screen that says subscribe for more videos. What I would tell you is stop asking for stuff. <clears throat> give, 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 ask. All right? Make a ton of content that does nothing but serve the needs of that viewer. Are you a Fortnite channel? Teach people how to beat a level. Teach people how to get their very first Fortnite win. Teach people how to get through a level using nothing but uh, crappy pickaxe. Teach people um, how to, uh, the best gun the, that they should be looking for in whatever new, you know, if they're doing free play, what do they call it? I, it's... I, my son plays Fortnite, and I, I, he tries to teach me, and I'm terrible at it. But I know that there's one that's like, that's like where you do a lot of building one-on-ones, and then sometimes it's actually you're competing against a bunch of other people. Like, figure that out and show people, teach people something. Make sure you're bringing something. Um, the way that you're going to grow this channel, um, get away from things like uploads. It doesn't help me. It doesn't tell me anything. Fortnite channel trailer doesn't tell me anything either. The, the, I put something here that defines what the channel's about. Fortnite channel trailer is like, I don't know what that means. So, you know, let's dial this in. What I would tell you is start making content that isn't just you playing a game, something that serves the needs of someone who's interested in learning Fortnite and where they might be having problems. Teach them something. Show them something. Show them how to get past the level. Show them something funny. Show them something in, in Fortnite that they haven't seen, right? Because no one, I'll tell you right now, I, I can go watch my son play Fortnite, but after about five or 10 minutes of watching over his shoulder, I walk away because I don't have the interest in it, right? But if he could show me something really cool that I hadn't seen done, then I'm going to stay and watch. And you know this, any of you gamers out there, if your girlfriend's sitting in the room with you, after a few minutes, she's not paying attention. She's on her phone, right? Or vice versa, girl's playing, your boyfriend's going to be on his phone. If you expect people just to be interested in like, watch me play a game, that's not enough. That's not enough unless you're the best player in the country. If you are, then that's enough. But typically there's someone better than you. So you really have to learn to find what the needs of the viewer are and try to support those needs by giving them something that they might be interested in seeing, how to beat levels, how to find weapons, how to survive, how to play, how to play better teams in Fortnite, something like that, right? Putting up Fortnite content 
I know a lot of times people want to watch Fortnite content or they want to, they'll let their kids watch it, but like a lot of it has swears in it and stuff. So maybe you could make a piece of content that's like, you know, uh, no swearing. I got a uh, Fortnite gameplay with absolutely no swears. Or the funniest moments that if you had something really crazy funny happen in Fortnite, the craziest moments in Fortnite. Like give some, something, compel the viewer to want to watch. It can't just be you um, being, you know, saying subscribe to my channel on black, all right? Uh, let me see. Uh, let me see. Let's see, Natalie. I'm gonna not Natalie Heels. Okay, let me find that channel. Thank you for the super chat, Natalie. Uh, let me see if I can spell this right. Natalie Heels. Natalie Heels. Let me have it, she says. <laughs> Just let me have it. Okay. Um, let me pull this channel up real quickly. Let's take a peek. It says Natalie Heels. So just as, as an instant, everybody look at me, uh, look at this channel with me and see if you can understand what this is about. Natalie Heels, I'm guessing she would be, um, you know, either she's a nurse or she's someone who might be teaching you how to uh, improve your health. So this might be a health channel, I would guess, by Natalie Heels. Um, I don't mind that it says Natalie Heels, but there's no other value proposition under it. Natalie, if it's you in all the videos, I would put your face up in that channel art. And I would also make Natalie Heels smaller because it's already there. I'm on your channel. I can see it. All of your videos, when they're served out, will have your name next to it. So when I come to your channel art, you got to give me more. You know, So make that smaller, Natalie. Right, Move this up a little bit or off to the side. And then put a single line of value proposition. Just tell me what this channel's about. If it's... um. You're a massage therapist. I had to go down to here to find out that it's massage therapy. So then up here, I would have liked to have seen, um, you know, um, heal your body, heal your body through, through massage therapy. Natalie heals, healing your body through massage therapy. If it said that and had your face, I'd go, now I get what this channel's about, Natalie, as opposed to just reading Natalie heals and going, I, she may be a nurse. She, I, I don't know. Could be a vet. She could be, I mean, she takes care of animals. I don't know that. So you have to help me as much as possible, okay? Um, that's better. This stuff, get rid of this. Um, non clickable links that mean nothing. Get that out of here. Um, get Instagram, Facebook, and Amazon out of here. The same thing. You're trying to grow this channel. Um, so when your channel is small, um, are you hiding your subscriber count? I think you are. I don't know why you're hiding your subscriber count. Don't do that. Um, it turns people off. Uh, some people tie their subscriber account because they think, oh, if I'm too small, people won't take me seriously. It does the opposite. I found that in everybody I've interviewed over the years, the vast majority of people, when they see that you're hiding your subscriber account, they think it's inauthentic and they think that you're trying to act like you're something bigger than you are. And being inauthentic on YouTube can hurt your channel. Be authentic. Show your subscribers. Um, <clears throat> don't do that. Get rid of this stuff. Save all that Instagram and all that stuff for Put that in the description of your video for people who are really interested and proven they're interested by watching videos and go, I wonder if she's on Instagram or Facebook. I wonder if she has an Amazon product that I'd be, oh, she talked about in this video. Put that down in the video. Up here, the only thing, get them watching, keep them watching, okay? Newest uploads, people. Popular uploads, people. Uploads, people. Anyone want to chime in? I'll let The chat will let you have it on this one. Those playlist titles do nothing to help me understand what this channel's about. What you should be telling me is, um, you know, if this one's, if this one's upload, this uploads tells me nothing. Popular upload, how to flick, how to fix planter fossil. I don't even know what that is. Fasciitis, fasci. I can't even spell F A S C I I T I S. I don't even know what that word is. Um, I'd be breaking these up into different things. Like if there's back pain, um, you know, like uh, how to solve back pain issues through massage, ther through massage therapy. That would be the name of a playlist. And you have a bunch of different ones that do upper back, lower back, spine. That would make sense to me, not popular uploads. If you have problems with legs or knees or how to stretch, then uh, the proper way to stretch to get your body moving for the day, to heal, to heal pain, to heal the morning, heal those morning pains. That would be a playlist title. And then put a description under that uh, that would say something like, these are the prop, uh, the pro uh, take it from a professional massage therapist. Here's some of the best stretching exercises that get you ready for your active day. Boom. Give me that. Give me that. Talk to me in the way that I would be compelled to watch as your target audience, someone who's interested in how either massage therapy might help me or staying fit from the perspective of a massage therapist, things I trip tips and tricks I might want to know about stretching, staying fit, um, whatever, how to get rid of knots, how to get rid of knots is a great one. I mean, I think that's, and I, it, that's a great one right there. Um, pelvic tilt did really well for you. 
Um, this planter, I don't know what that thing is, but it did 31,000 views, assuming that is all organic views. Um, that was something people are interested in. I like your thumbnails. I do like your thumbnails. They're simple. They make a lot of sense to me. I love them already. So I love what you're doing. Simple, easy. You do use a lot of text, but it's readable. So I do like the thumbnails. So all I would, all I would tell you is, Natalie, um, just see if you can dial it in. Like, make it really easy for me to understand what this is about. If this, is a, if this was a book cover, I want to be able to look at that book and know what this book is about in a second. You know, so, so make sure that all of that is built that way, all right? Um, let's see, what else do we have? Megan, work with me here. Um, the Animal Intuitive. Okay, let me see if I can find that one. Animal Intuitive. Uh, let me see. What was the question? Uh, it's in, I'm trying to pull it up. Super chat, super chat. It's in our private chat. Animal intuitive towards the bottom, towards the top. Let me pull up that channel, uh, really quickly. Let me put my scribble tool away. <laughs> scribble on everything. Um, the animal intuitive. Is that right? Does I spell that right? Uh, the animal intuitive. Oh boy. Okay. Um, let's see. Towards the bottom. The Animal Intuitive channel. Uh, let's see. Four, uh, $5 Super Chat. Thank you very much for that. Not growing. Just updated thumbnails. Is Banner bad? Help. Uh, yeah, Banner's bad. Uh, <laughs> you ask an honest question, I'll give you an honest answer. Too much tax. Look at all this stuff going on. Subscribe. Animal Care. Uh, um, animal Intuitive. There's so much. So much text. You've got too much going on. And then you've got sort of a fuzzy picture of a, a cat, horse, and a dog. This, and you've got subscribe pointing down at nothing. Yeah, let's simplify this, all right? Let's get it, let's simplify, put a comb, you're pulling my eye in a million directions. You've got a hundred different fonts, a hundred different colors. Simplify this and make it clear to me that I understand what this channel's about. Um, it's apparently intuitive touch animal care. That's what should be in there. Also, stop with all of this. No one's, if, you don't need to put registered trademark in your title. You don't need to put the, in, the Animal Intuitive Registered Trademark Channel ha, space hyphen and Angela Web. It's so much. It's so much. It's, it's, this, is like, this is the kind of description that you would have in your About tab. Decide what this is. Is, is it the anim, Animal Intuitive Channel? Then just call it the Animal, animal, intu, the animal Intuitive Channel. Uh, or if you want to use your name, then be an Angela Webb. And then talk about intuitive touch animal care. And then make it, if, if, decide what you're branding. Are you branding you? Or are you branding the name of the um, animal intuitive channel? Which is, we know we're on a channel. You don't need to put channel in the title of a channel. It's, that's like putting the word, telling people that your video was a video when they click on your video. Putting the, this video, <laughs> video about animal care. You don't need to use the word video in the title of a video. People know it's a video. They know they're on a channel. So um, straighten that out. Again, upload. Sh shorts, you can't help. All you've got is uploading shorts. How many videos do you have uploaded to the channel, my friend? Quite a few. Um, quite a few. So you have quite a few videos, and you have very few put onto your channel homepage. All you have is uploads and shorts. So you haven't taken the time to really break down. Hold on. You haven't taken the time to break down that channel homepage and build it like a storefront. So... Get the channel art straightened out. The thumbnails are also really tricky for me. If I'm looking at some of these thumbnails, look at how much text there is. I have to use my old man magnifying glass. I got a picture of you. I've got text down here that I can't read. 103, there's a number. I don't know what any of that says. Then there's all these arrows and arrows and colors. And it's all over the place. You, you got to simplify. If it's, um, if there's, uh, if, well, I'm, I'm not familiar personally what animal intuitive intuitive touch animal care is but i can tell you right now this isn't helping me understand it um these thumbnails are way too busy they draw my eye all over the place the titles aren't really helping me too much live animal communication animals in love with like uh, that's not helping me i would go to google and go what is she talking about um, um animal intuitive is it i'm gonna get this right intuitive touch Intuitive touch animal care. Let me start here. Intuitive touch animal care. Um, maybe you just own that website. I don't know if it's, a, if it's a thing. Maybe this is you and Angela Webb. So this is probably you. I find you, but I don't know what, in, is it just, I'm trying to figure out, is intuitive touch the name of your, your, your company, which I think it is, your, your brand? Or is it, a, is it a process by which you heal animals? Is this some homeopathic, holistic 
thing that I'm missing out because I'm not finding all of these things you're stressing are just brand names. They mean nothing to me. I'm like intuitive touch animal care. Okay. Is that a specific like healing thing? I use crystals. You wave your hands. There's all these, I don't know what, if, if it's just animal care, simplify it. Tell me it's, you know, pet care, you know, and, and take it down to like, uh, uh teaching you, uh, te- uh, ki- helping keep your, helping keep your, helping keep your animals healthy. That's what I want to see, right? The intuitive animal channel, helping keep your animals healthy. And then you're teaching us ways to keep our animals safe and healthy and understand the problems I might have. Um, then that's cool, but I'm not getting any of this. There's so much words and so much branding and there's so much, there's so much. So simplify that in, um, and see if you can get that down. Think about the viewer. If the viewer you're trying to reach, go back to the basics value proposition. What's your channel about? Well, I'm a veterinarian. We're an animal care channel. Cool. Who's the target audience? Well, pet owners or animal owners who are maybe, you know, and this may be right or wrong, but you need to tell me this people who, um, are, you know, who have animals that they want to make sure stay healthy. Okay. Why would they watch your channel? Not just as opposed to another pet care channel, but as opposed to any of their other interests, they might be served during a watch session. I think if they're interested in playing guitar and learning piano and riding Harley Davidson's and buying vintage automobiles, all of the above I am, and also taking care of their pets, which I'm also interested in. Why would in the moment when I'm served all these different types of videos, why would I stop and watch your video over this brand new cool, you know, 68 Mustang fastback that's being stripped down and rebuilt. Cause you need to be clear to me that you're speaking to me and say like, um, you know, your video better tell me like, you know, six, uh, you know, five ways to spot if your cat is unhealthy, uh, uh five ways to uh, th- th- top three ways to notice if your cat is, um, is, is, uh, is hurt, is, is unhealthy. If there was a video like that and I have cats, I might stop and go, Oh, Oh, Actually, it just reminded me, I'm like, my cat was throwing up the other day or there was something like, maybe I should watch this video because I actually might learn something. I'll, I'll check out the car in a minute. You got to speak to me on that level. You got to stop putting your brand first with all these registered trademarks and names and start talking to me about the thing I'm interested in. I don't know you. So talk to me about the thing I'm interested in, the commonality, the interest we share, making sure your animals stay healthy, how to know what's wrong with your animal. Okay. Um, newest comment in our chat. Hold on a second in our chat. I'm, I'm jumping. I'm jumping all around. Um, welcome to uh, Homekeeping Channel we've got here. I'm, I'm jumping all around. Uh, hold on a second. I got to go. I'm way back. I'm so far back. I'm going to start here. Leadership with Mike. Uh, I would love a channel review, Denial. <laughs> we had a call six months ago. My name is a tough one to spell. Um, I'd like to see if I'd learn anything, and if I can't learn, let me move backwards. Leadership with Mike. Good to see you, Mike. Um, let me take a quick peek here. Leadership with Mike. Pull you up over here really quickly. Um, uh, 22,000 subscribers. Fantastic. Same thing, Mike, that I think we talked about earlier. You've got tons of text up in your channel art. I love there's a picture with you. I love that it's positive. I love those things. But you've got so much going on up here. Helping new, helping new managers become confident leaders, imposter syndrome, build trust, avoid mistakes, career advancement, earn respect, create culture, for, featured in Forbes, Doctor, I like this featured in thing is cool, but you've got too much going on here. Simplify it. Simplify it. All right. When, you, when you're going to try to get the messaging across, don't put a book in your channel art. Get it to be simple. Think of it like a billboard that someone's driving down the highway and they glance up and you've got to get them f- to figure out what it is your channel's about. While they're driving, they glance up and they look back and say, what was that about? What was that about? Quick blink, look at your channel art, blink your eyes a couple times and open them back up and look where your eye is drawn to and see what, if you're pulling the, um, if you're pulled to the important portions of that. I see you with your thumbs up, that's cool. Um, <clears throat> but you're saying like, uh, helping new managers become confident leaders. Is it only new managers? Is it, man- what about the managers who have been in this position for a while and they're watching the world change around them, right? Do you have to use the word new? Maybe it's uh, helping managers become um, better leaders. You know, simplify, simplify, Mike. Take it down a step so that the thing that you're creating is easy to digest and understand in a heartbeat. Understand your target audience. Um, I love what you got going on here. Featured piece of content. Uh, five signs you're actually a good manager. That's awesome. Um, gain self confidence as a manager. Let's get some um, descriptions in these um, playlists, Mike. Uh, gain self confidence as a manager is a great playlist title. Put under here like, um, are you struggle? Uh, are you a manager who's struggling with um, self confidence? Question mark. Uh, 
In this series, I'll give you a few tips to help you gain the self-confidence you need to be more to be a more effective manager. Put a description like that underneath. The same way here's as a manager, you will not want to see. Wow, hold on. As a manager, you will want to see these to build your trust in the team. This is too much. So <laughs> this is too much. Now simplify, right? As a manager, you will want to see these to build your trust in the team. Wow. All right. Break that down, Mike. How to build how to build how to build team trust as a manager. Simplify. Take all those extra words out, make it easy for the viewer to understand. Because that run on sentence I had to read twice and I still think I read it wrong. All right. How to build how to build team trust as a manager. That's what that should have been called. And then building trust with your team takes time. That's what it was about. So how to build team trust as a manager. That's the name of that video playlist. What to do in your first 90 days of your new management job. I, that's not bad. Um, that's a pretty good one. It's a little wordy, but I, I understand it. And then look at this one. Hey, you, new manager, you can find what you need in this playlist. It's made for you the first. Oh, my gosh. Killing me. Killing me, Mike. Simplify. Simplify. Um, um, new, manage, uh, uh, new, manager, new manager tips for beginners. All right? Do it there. Uh, 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 the most important tips for new managers. Simplify. 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 Okay? Let's make it easy for them to understand. Again, um, You've done things. I like a lot of your thumbnails. I think they're consistent. You're leveraging your face. Meet the team 30 days, your first week. I think that's really smart stuff. Your first week as a new manager, your first day. Really, really smart. Um, so this is a great playlist here. I like a lot of what's going on. I think you got a lot of the right pieces here, Mike. What I would tell you is, um, again, simplify. I want you to always... The thing I'm seeing right off the bat is your channel art is too wordy. Your playlist titles are too wordy. Let's try to make it all condensed in everything. Keep the, the way you've been building these thumbnails, which are nice and simple and easy to understand. Let's make sure every other piece of the equation is simple. Trim the fat. Make sure you condense it down. The problem I always worry about is if your channel art is that busy, what's going on inside of your videos? Are they too busy too? Are you? Do you have too much fat in them as well that you can be trimming down? Let's see if we can figure out ways to trim the fat as much as possible, get right to the point so that at a glance someone understands what all those things are, okay? But otherwise, I, I love what's going on. You've, you've definitely, you're definitely pulling it in the right direction. Keep working on that. I'm um, scrolling backwards here. Um, this was a channel checkup, please, from Dean Tinney. Hey, Dean, absolutely. Let me pull that up. All right, Dean Tinney. All right, cool. I can find you in search, which is one of the most important things. I like to make sure that I can find a channel in search. Um, usually that comes from just doing some of the right things, making the kind of content that connects. Um, wow, okay, here we go. Very niched. F I N R A and N A S A A exam prep. Subscribe for frequently added lectures. But okay, <clears throat> well, let's start here. Let's wet the whistle. Okay, repeat after me, everyone. Give, 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 give. Ask. Do not start your channel art with subscribe. Subscribe. Do this. I, you don't know me yet. You can't even see who I am. My face isn't here. I've got nothing but text. But hey, I need you to subscribe. You're asking too soon. What you should have put up here is Dean Tinney. Um, and then I don't know what um, F-I-N-R-A and N-A-S-A-A exam preps are, but people who would be interested in that, um, I have to find, I'm going to actually look it up. What is uh, F-I-N-R-A exams? Um, this is for to become a registered securities professional. Okay, securities. Okay, so it's uh, trading stocks uh, to be a broker. Ah, okay. All right. There we go. And then I guess NASAA would be the same, right? NASAA exams. See, I have to learn. Look at what you're making me go through to understand what this channel's about. Um, financial industry regulator authority. So if you want to be, um, if you want to be in the financial sector, how to become a broker. Your channel does not scream. Did anybody in the chat get what this channel was about? The average user, if you want, if you, you, you're so down the rabbit hole in the funnel that I already have to know, what if I'm someone just sitting at home going, I wonder what it takes to be a broker. I've thought about doing that. I don't know the exams. I don't know what they are. You've got so far ahead of me. It's like when I ask a mathematician to help me learn math and they go, oh, no problem. What's the first thing you need to do is take the cosine divided by the numerator and then take that over to the denominator and they start using math terms to explain math. And I go, I don't know what any of that means. So you want to start with the language of the people you're trying to reach. 
You interested in becoming a broker? You interested in becoming a, into the financial uh, industry? You want to learn more about how to do that? You need to speak to me. You should say Dean Tinney teaching you everything you know, need to know to become a broker or everything you need to know to enter the financial industry, right? Speak to me that level. I'm not getting any of that up here, Dean. Um, also, it looks like you're hiding subscriber count too. Are you? You've got 138 videos and you are hiding your subscriber count. You're doing that, that same thing that people do because they feel like they don't have enough subscribers. Um, put your subscriber count up there. Um, all of these are just text on thumbnails. Listen, there's a place for you to use text and it's called the title. And there's a place for you to use imagery and that's called a thumbnail. So wherever you can talk about, um, about the actual thing that's in question, use images to try to represent that. And you're talking so deep down the rabbit hole. Series 24 exam prep, it's 12 days ago, it got 53 views. You're trying to find people who are already down the rabbit hole. You're already trying to find people who are in taking the tests. I think you're too far down. I think you need to start coming back. And you need to start coming back like, in, um, you know, how to, uh, how to prepare, how to prepare to become a broker, how to prepare, speak in the language that people, um, that people speak. Um, all right. Now, let me give you an example of this, my friend. Okay, Dean? See all this? SIE exam prep bid and ask series seven. Series 24 exam prep locked cross markets. I don't understand what any of this is. But when I go to Google and I put in NASAA exams and I look at what people also ask, Google helps us understand how to simplify the language. What is the NSAA exam? How difficult is the Series 66 exam? Can I take the 65 exam online? What is the Series 63 exam for? Simplify. Simplify. Speak to the broadest target audience and try to talk about the things that they are interested in overall. Not get so far down the rabbit hole that if someone's interested in learning how to you know, fix their, their, their brakes, make a squeaky sound when they turn left, and you start talking about calipers and rotors and pistons, and you know, they don't even know those terms yet. They go, all I know is my car makes a noise when it turns left, and I'm trying to find some help here. Speak to the target audience you're trying to reach in a language that they're already speaking, okay? Yes, you can have some more in-depth guide stuff specifically to exams, but be broader, okay? And get all that, when you're making a thumbnail, think about, you know, what does it look like when someone wants to be a broker? You can get images of people, you know, trying to be out there on the floor, or they're trying to trade, or trying to do stocks, use imagery of stocks and markets and things like that, instead of just taking big blocks of thumbnails and going, I don't know what to put here, so I'll just put a bunch of words. Makes it very hard for the viewer to understand if they have to read your thumbnail. They should look at it and in a glance understand it, okay? So work on that, um, Dean. But um, that's where I'd go, and it's tricky. I know sometimes when... Remember that you're someone who has a lot of knowledge, but you're trying to talk to people who have very little knowledge. So start with the basics. When we talked about Roger Wakefield earlier, right? He's a plumber, but he started with the basic, basics, how to fix a leaky toilet. That's what you need to do when you're talking to people who might be interested in somewhere down the line, thinking about being a broker or entering the financial industry. Start with the basic, most broadest um, questions uh, that people might ask and then work your way from there, Dean. Uh, let me see. I'm scrolling. I'm scrolling. I know I've missed some. I apologize. Um, here was one. Uh, collecting with cool to know. I think I'm spreading my content out a little too much. I think I may be confusing my love of collecting vintage memorabilia with travel vlogs and reactions. Oh, I can tell you that all day long. Yeah. What's your... Uh, before I even pull up your channel, collecting with cool to know. Same with everybody in the um, chat. Think about your value proposition. What's your channel about? Who's the target audience based on their interests? Why would they watch your content? So you can't, if, the, if your target audience is people who are really interested in vintage memorabilia, are they interested in travel or is travel a different thing? So you want to make sure that reactions and travel vlogs may not have any, not that you might be making bad travel vlogs, but they're, if they're not serving the needs of vintage memorabilia um, fans, then those, uh, those videos are going to fragment your audience, okay? So, cool to know. Collecting with cool to know. Let me see if I can find you. Uh, collecting with cool to know. So let me just pull this up really quickly. Let me share your channel. Um, you're not using any featured content up here. Uh, you can put a video up here for the new viewer. They call it a trailer, but I just say put up your highest converting video that's performed well on your channel. That's true to your value prop. And then for returning subscribers, I'd say put up a video that's your most recent. So if someone missed a notification, it'll be right up top. Um, toy hunt collection, store vlogs, and videos about me. If you're making a channel that's designed to serve 
the needs of the viewer and you tell me that your video is about me, you immediately tell me uh, that you don't care about me. I don't know you. I don't know you, cool to know. So when you tell me that this is all about me and I don't know you, then you've lost me already. You're not serving the needs of the audience. Then we go down. My personal Star Wars and memorabilia collection. Awesome. Awesome. I don't know you. So why would the fact that it's your personal Star Wars collection and memorabilia mean anything to me? Channel live streams mostly Mondays and sometimes random if I'm traveling. My God, you are so self-obsessed. <laughs> this is every playlist title talks about you and what you're doing. And nobody knows you yet. What do you got? 90 subscribers? So you're really new. You really need to put the needs of the viewers first. If you're going to talk about um, collecting, um, and if that's what this is, collecting stuff, I wouldn't have said my personal Star Wars and memorabilia collection. I would have said um, some of the coolest Star Wars memorabilia pieces I've found. Now, you can say me like I've found, but you're leaning on the pieces. Lean on the, like say, these are the coolest pieces that I've found. Where people go, oh, I haven't seen that one. Oh, I have that one too. Oh, you know what you should look for, right? And start talking about some of the things that, you're, that, you're, that you like. Um, but then it says things like Emperor Palpatine, Revenge of the Sith. That's not a great video title because... Um, that doesn't say anything about that it's a collective piece or what it is or where you found it. All it says is character movie name. That does not do a great job of explaining what this video is about. If someone said Emperor Palpatine, Revenge of the Sith, I'd say, oh yeah, I know that character from the movie, right? Oh no, this video is not about, it's about actually a, a memorabilia piece. How would I know that? How would I know that from the title? Um, General, Gri General Grievous, Revenge of the Sith, uh, preview figure. At least you put preview figure. So now you've done something with this. Like I was able to see, oh, it's a figure, right? And you're holding it up. Take better pictures. Look at all that dead space around there. Make sure that you're doing a better job with your thumbnails. This looks like it's almost a screen capture from the video itself. Take a second to get your camera, get a really good picture. Use your cell phone. That Cell phones take great pictures. Get a great shot using your thumbnail. Thumbnails are super important. That's where I'd start, my friend. Um, collecting with cool to know, memorabilia, hunting reviews, reaction streams, and more. Too much up in here. If it's collecting with cool to know and you're in every video, put your face up here. Um, put, uh, you know, memorabilia, hunting reviews, reaction streams, and more is too much. Make it simple. Who's the target audience um, and why would they watch your content? Well, you say, well, it'd be, be people who's interest, interested in um, vintage memorabilia. Okay, well, then get vintage memorabilia up there. Um, all, you know, if it said like collecting with cool to know, um, on the hunt for, on, always on the hunt for vintage memorabilia, you know, uh, something to that effect. And then had some of that stuff up in the channel art, I'd start to understand, well, what kind of memorabilia? Is it movie memorabilia? Is it, you know, is it music memorabilia? You know, think about what it is you're actually collecting and get it up there so people can understand what it is. And try not to fa fragment too much um, because even in memorabilia, there are people who do nothing but collect Elvis you know, memorabilia and have no interest in Star Wars. So, you know, make sure you're figuring out, start in a tighter genre and then work your way out as you get bigger. Connect with people on a level that, that um, your content starts driving views um, so that someone who's really interested in Star Wars and then tomorrow you're doing Disney stuff, they go, I don't care about Disney World churros. That doesn't, 50-year-old churros, I don't care about that. I care about the Star Wars stuff. So try to figure out where you, what lane you're going to be in now and try to stay in it, okay? That'll make it easier for you to start connecting with a target audience and then grow that audience as the channel develops a bit over time. And that's true with everybody in the chat. Think about how to develop that over time, okay? Uh, let me see. I'm trying to catch up here. Any tips for a gaming channel? Natural causes. We've talked about this a, a bunch, natural causes. Absolutely, I think... My tips are always the same. Make sure that, um, that your, your gaming channel does something different than, um, than other channels do. Try to really um, stick out. But I'm going to let me find your channel here. Um, oh, this is really good. I actually really like this. Natural Causes. I see the dinosaur. Um, 62,000 subscribers, almost 63. Congratulations on that. It looks like this is dedicated to dinosaur stuff, natural causes. That makes me sound like he died of natural causes, like an extinction. Um, be careful of all this stuff up here. Chat on Discord, Patreon, boom. Just pick the ones that are most important. If you're driving money to Patreon, leave that up there. Or if Discord's important, start with that one. But you've got too many pieces up here. Let's try to keep them on platform. I spent 100 days in the Ark is kind of cool. That's correct. It's very cool. I spent 100 days uh, to beat Ark's hardest mod. That's very cool. I like this. I like this idea. I spent 100 days in the Ark. I have 100 days in Jurassic Ark. This is really cool. Look how well he's done, too. Really cool thumbnails. Um, 
And 1.7 million views. If that's all organic, that's fantastic. I love this. Yeah, my, my trick is which ones you do? An arc modded nightmare. Uh, learn ni I like this. Learn niche arc mechanics. Um, recent series, I don't know, does a lot for you right there. Shorts, unfortunately, has to be there. Yeah, see how much, of, see how much more of the content. Um, don't be afraid to add a little descriptions to these playlists. Um, what I would tell you at your channel size, let me give you a better piece of advice. Um, at, this is from three months ago. This is two months ago. That's 1.7 million views. That's 1.7 million views. Make sure that you're using the four places in, um, on YouTube that they give us to recommend more of your content. Now, if this is driving 1.7 million views, that, and they're, if they're organic, um, that means that it's connecting with your target audience. You've got this great one, I spent 100 days to beat Ark's Hardest Mod, and you have another one, I spent 100 days to beat Primal Fear. So you might want to um, link these together. If you open up this video here, I want to see four places that you recommend content. The first place would be a, um, a card, which you're not using. It would be a white circle up here if you were. Make sure you put a card um, in the last 20% of your video, okay? Um, that's where you want to place it. That's where your pre-qualifying viewers who have enjoyed most of the video and are more likely to kick, uh, click a card if it's presented to them. When you get to the end of your video, make sure you're using end screens. Let me just quickly see if you're using an end screen. I'm trying. Excuse me. Um, not, come on, end screen. Patreon. There's one. Uh, two. I would recommend using one end screen. Um, and I would, uh, one is enough. Two, um, not my favorite way to go. Not terrible. Um, in the description, let's see. Uh, you do not have a link in the description. If you do, it's down below the show more. And so I would put it above the show more. I like that you have chapters. That's excellent. Uh, and do you have a pinned comment? You do have a pinned comment. A uh, ton of time and effort gone to this one. So I hope you enjoy five. Wow, you've got a lot of asks in here. This is what I would tell you. Uh, if you want to grow this even faster, try to, um, try to funnel the viewers with a specific thing. Remember that if you've got a video that's driving um, 1.7 million views, that's getting served a lot to, to viewers. That means it's being viewed a lot by a lot of different um, targeted uh, members who, or uh, target audience members who really enjoy that kind of content. What I would do is use a card, an end screen, a link in the description above the fold. Don't make them click show more to find it. And that pinned comment to push them all in one direction. Um, that direction may be things like you're trying to sell something. Be intentional about it. But I personally would rather see you take them, um, take the, the, the stuff that's all connected that makes sense together and link from one to the other. You've got content on your channel in that playlist alone that was driving, let me show you. Let me pull your screen up here, right? You have content right here that was driving 1.7 million views. You've got another one from two months ago that's already at 1.7 million views. So I would tell you, take this video here and in the card end screen, link in the description and pin comment, I would push towards this one in all four places. The reason I would push towards the same video in all four places is that no matter what any uh, viewer does, if one person comes along, clicks the card, another person comes along, clicks an end screen, third person comes along, clicks the link in the description above the fold, right? Above, don't make them click show more. And a fourth person comes along and clicks the pinned comment. And if they all pushed from this video to this video, that means that four different people took four different actions, but all sent one traffic signal back to YouTube. People who watch the 100 Days to Beat the Ark's Hardest Mod video tend to go on to watch the 100 Days to Beat Primal Fear video. And what happens is, is you start, you have to understand, YouTube uses traffic data to understand who to recommend your content to. So if you get people all, no matter where they click, they all send the same traffic signal back, YouTube can start taking those traffic signals and implementing them themselves and start recommending your other content in the up next and down suggested sidebar. As well as if you've got them clicking another video, which makes a lot of sense because it's, it's a relative um, in what it's, the subject matter is and it's high performing, there, you're more likely to get two pieces of video content in the recent watch history, and that means when they come back tomorrow in browse, um, YouTube is going to look at, well, what, is this, what has this person been watching recently? What's in their watch history? If you've got two pieces of content, that means you're more likely to get more of your content served on their homepage. So think about the linking structure. At your size, start funneling the viewer intentionally. When something performs well, make sure that something that's performing well pushes always towards something similar in relevance and also high performance. 
That way you can get people funneling the viewers. If you've got a series, um, a playlist like this, I would take all of these and I would go, I would have this one linked to this one in all four places. I would have this one linked to this one in all four places. And I would have this one linked to this one in all four places. So you got this view funnel of all these high performing hundred days um, videos that you've made. The highest performing pushing towards the next highest performing in all four places. The number two video of the hundred days pushing towards the number three video in all four places. And you're building these really nice uh, view funnels. So people who love that piece of content are immediately, you're getting ahead of YouTube and you're recommending more of that similar content to that viewer, no matter where they click, no matter what pops up. All right. Really smart though. Good job with this channel. Guys who are, if you're making a gaming channel, nice and simple, right? You know what this one's about gaming. It's all about this. This is all about dinosaurs. The savage arc, uh, savage acro is incredibly powerful. Talking about all these different, uh, dinosaur games been really cool, easy to understand, great thumbnails, getting tons of views and making playlists that make a lot of sense. I spent a hundred days in arc really smart, nicely done. Uh, let me see. I'm, I'm getting near the end here. I'm wrapping. I'm moving as quickly as I can. I apologize if I've missed any of these. Um, Creative Girl of Color. Let me pull you up. Um, can you look at my channel? What can I do to increase watch time and rank? Is there something wrong with my title or should I take my face out of the thumbnail? Thank you so much. Uh, that's really funny. When I first started on my channel, I used to put my face in all the thumbnails. And then I realized that they actually perform better if I used imagery that wasn't me and I took myself out. <laughs> I used to make a joke and say, people think I'm ugly. They don't like me. But really, it's all about um, it's all about making sure that whatever you build is easy for the viewer to understand. Um, creative girl of color, I want to know in an instant what it is that your channel is about. So I'm going to look very quickly. Creative girl of color, you're holding up paint. So I think you're a painter. This is an image of painting. Portrait painting, tutorials for beginners, new videos every week. Love it. Nice and simple. I get what this is about. Um, at a glance, be careful. Some of this, this might be a little small on mobile. You might want to um, optimize. You've got a little bit of extra space. See the extra space up here? Maybe get you up and over. Maybe get Creative Girl of Color up and maybe make this part, the portrait painting tutorials for beginners. Maybe make it a little bigger or put it into two lines. And then the new videos every week is important, but it doesn't need to be as important as the value prop. But I got this. I got what you're about. Um, you're teaching people how to do portrait uh, painting. Uh, for beginners, which is great. I love for beginners. Uh, meet the artist. That's kind of cool. Do you need that here? Three years ago, it's only got 909 views. What I would tell you is I'm not subscribed to your channel. So what I would do instead is I would find a video instead of putting meet the artist, a channel trailer, you know, do I need that? What I really want is um, I want you to put up a piece of content that serves your value proposition and that the data shows has done really well with the target own audience, hopefully driving views, but really more importantly, converting. A lot of people have subscribed when they watch this video. You can find that data in YouTube analytics. Um, how to paint an Afro for beginners. <laughs> That's awesome. Acrylic painting portrait. I would take one of these higher performing ones. Um, I'm choking up here. I'm sorry. Um, and I would try to figure out um, which one makes sense to your value prop. And I would put that, I would put that in the featured content for a new subscriber so that it really explains, you know, show, just show them exactly what you're doing. Don't have to explain who you are. Get right into it. I always say this. How do people come to your channel as a new visitor? They probably, um, they probably saw a video and clicked on your channel name. So if they did that, they're probably trying to learn more about like what, what's this content like? I always make this analogy, like if I saw a movie trailer and I went, oh, that looks like a good movie, and I go into the movie theater, don't give me a channel trailer for the movie I'm about to watch before the movie. Just give me the movie, right? Just hit me with the movie. So the same thing I say is put a really strong piece of content. Give them the thing. Um, acrylic portrait painting, tutorials for beginners, really great. Um, you don't need uploads. Get rid of that. Creative Creative Girl of Color painting tutorials. Don't do this stuff. Don't slam your name into a playlist title because one – it doesn't make any sense. You didn't put any spaces in. And two, it's, I don't know, if I don't know who you are, that doesn't mean anything to me. Um, I would elaborate on that. Painting tutorials, you know, make it, don't put popular uploads, creative girl podcast. All this stuff is, it's, it, it doesn't speak to the viewer who doesn't know who you are. And channels don't grow faster um, than they do when people who have no idea who you are um, get invested through the content. So focus on the needs of the viewer. And what you should be talking about is acrylic painting tutorials for beginners, things you need to know. Um, I want you to investigate all the things that people would need to know about learning how to paint. And this is supposed to be portrait painting, right? Portrait painting tutorials. None of your playlists even mention portrait painting. So, um, 
the you know there should be ones in here the very basics of portrait portrait painting how to begin how to begin your very first portrait painting uh creating your first portrait paintings things like that focus on the needs of the viewer and see if you can double down on those things to make it easy because if i'm someone who's interested in learning how to portrait paint um unfortunately uploads um painting tutorials popular uploads creative girl podcast none of those are really great at telling me i'm trying to figure out about portrait painting and none of one of those really told me about portrait painting they were sort of the closest was painting tutorials but i didn't even specify portrait painting so be really specific about what you're teaching people um and focus on their needs okay and thank you for the 999 super chat all right, listen, I'm literally losing my voice from this COVID thing here. So I appreciate everyone hanging out. If I didn't get to you, um, feel free to hit me up in the comments um, afterwards, and I'll absolutely take a look at your channel, and we'll, take a, and we'll, uh, we'll see if we can get you on the, on the right path. I, I appreciate you guys hanging out today. Um, I need to thank the sponsors that we have here today. We're very lucky to have some great people who uh, allow me to put these uh, live streams on, and uh, those people are right here. This live stream is sponsored in part by StreamYard, live streaming made simple. And by Spreadshop, the number one resource for all of your print-on-demand needs. If you guys want to learn more about Spreadshop or StreamYard, the very um, software I use to do these live streams, uh, I'll put links down below in the description. You can click and try both of them for free. You can get your own Spreadshop set up and start selling your own merch for nothing. And you can actually start live streaming up to 20 hours a month using StreamYard uh, for free. So definitely check them out. I want to thank you guys for hanging out here today. I hope this has been helpful. We'll definitely do it again. Uh, thank you for letting me look at your channels. Thank you for the super chats. Uh, and I hope you guys have a great afternoon. Peace.